greatest of all teachers and giver of love, hope, faith, and wisdom. Look upon your children, the teachers, learners, parents, guardians, and out-of-school youth and adults. We humbly ask for your mercy and forgiveness. Guide us to the right path. May our efforts be blessed with insights and understanding, wisdom and respect for all. Bless us with patience, for the path of learning is never easy. Bless our commitment to keep on learning new knowledge and experiences. Let your light shine upon us as we make our world a better place to live in. Amen. Magandang araw, April and Marcus po ang inyong Pretty Ate sa EdTech Unit. Alam ba ninyo na may webinar o online training session ng EdTech Unit tuwing Sabado? Ang araw na ito ay nakalaan para sa ating mga mahal na kaguruan upang turuan sila ng mga bagong kaalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng mga bagong software at applications para sa pinaka-epektibong paraan at lubos mapaghusay ang kanilang paraan ng pagtuturo. This is also our fresher session for our beloved teachers to enhance their skills in technology. Every Saturday, we will conduct webinar sessions for teachers about the use, advantages, and relevance of different blended learning software applications. Ang webinar seryang ito ay magsisimula ng alas 9 ng umaga hanggang alas 12 ng tanghali para sa morning session. Magsisimula naman ng alauna at magtatapos ng alas 4 ng hapon ang afternoon session. You can watch us in our depth at EdTech Unit Facebook page, Educational Technology Unit YouTube channel, DepEd Tayo and DepEd Philippines. Kita-kits tayo tuwing Sabado! Cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS EdTech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad. An awesome and amazing morning, everyone! Isa na namang mapagpalang umaga sa ating lahat. Yes, maayong buntag sa tanan. Okay, so in behalf of the Department of Education, Central Office, ICTS, ETU, I formally welcome you all to the Tech Talk second episode for April. Ayan, so uh, I hope you will join us using the hashtag Tech Talks for All. And with that, Uh, i-welcome ko muna yung co-host ko. Hello, <laughs> Hello Teacher po. Zari! Hello po, Teacher Rubeli. Magandang umaga po sa lahat at sa ating mga manonood. Ayan, so Teacher Rubeli, isang siksik, liglig at umaapaw sa learning na naman po tayo ngayong umaga at siguradong kayo mga manonood, di nyo pagsisihan gawin itong kickstart para simula na inyong Saturday morning. And of course, I am both grateful and excited to be with you at maging co-host po ni Teacher Rubelin. Ayan. So, yes, Teacher po. Rubelin, greet po muna natin yung ating mga participants. Ayan, ang dami po nilang nag-greet sa ating comment section ngayon. Simulan yes. po natin kay Teacher Maria Vicente Galvez. Good morning daw, watching from SDO Zamboanga City. Meron din po tayo dito from San Jose del Monte. Good morning po, Teacher Marilyn. Ayan. Kayo po ba, Teacher Rubilin? Baka meron kayo dyan gustong ipashoutout, mga co-teacher natin dyan. 
Yes po, nakikita ko po dito no si Ma'am Marites Dalay de Rosas. Ayan. Good morning from SDO of Antipolo City. At may nakikita ako dito Ma'am no uh, from Saudi no ang layo. Wow. Kim Jong Pyamin. So international po yung viewers natin this morning, Teacher Zari. Ayan, so meron din so, dito like from Mindanao. Oh. <laughs> si Larry Bugs. Watching from Sinonok National High School, Zamboanga City. Uy, ang layo. <laughs> ang layo na po na nararating natin. Yes Ayan. po, meron din po dito from Rizal. Ayan. At ano po, meron din from San Jose del Monte, si Marilyn Sanchez Kayabiab. Ayan, no, Sabado ngayon, Teacher Zari. So, yung mga yes. teachers, yung mga viewers natin, dapat naglalaba, uh, nagliging <laughs> ang bahay, pero willing po kasi silang matuto, kaya nandito sila, di ba? Ano nga yes, po okay. yung ano, topic this morning, Teacher Zari? Ayan. Para naman, may idea sila. Your teacher, Rubelin. So, based po sa program details natin ngayon, pag-uusapan natin is all about paano natin magagamit ng husto ang or mapalawak yung ating creativity inside our homes. Hence, ang title nga ng ating session for today is Harnessing Your Creativity Juices at Home. Given na gawa nga ng quarantine setup ngayon, tama po ba? Is halos lahat tayo are forced and given no choice but to stay at home most of the time. So with the discussions na maririnig natin today, we'll hopefully break that boundaries and help you teachers and students at kahit kami po para mapakawalan natin ang ating natatanging inner creativity kahit pa na we are all enclosed within the four walls of our home. Ayan. Yeah. So that's good with technology that we're having now, Teacher Zari. Kasi exactly. po, we can still be productive Yes, and we can do our task efficiently and effectively. Yeah, no? So, kung yung mga clients namin, like yung mga teachers, di ba? So, we can reach out our learners, yung mga parents, at yung iba pa po na willing naman pong uh, maka-assist sa ating mga learners. Ayan, exactly. so, yeah, so, ayan. So, to formally welcome us all, Teacher Zari, sin, uh, please introduce na po uh, yung, uh, ano natin, no? ka isa-isang uh, napakaganda <laughs> na yes na manager po ng ating Microsoft Ayan. Ayan. So, para po to welcome everybody. So, meron po tayong isang familiar face na po sa ating umaga ngayon. At siya po is coming from Microsoft Philippines. Siya po si Ms. Grace Ko, Education Programs Manager of Microsoft Philippines. Again, she's a graduate of Bachelor of Arts in Communication Arts from the University of Santo Tomas with Latin Honors. O, oh, diba? Bigatin agad. Simula pa lang tayo. An experienced program trainer with a demonstrated history of working in the technology and events industry. Skilled in sustainable prog program development, event management, community management, art direction, training, delivery, and marketing campaigns. So, everyone, here is Miss Grace Ko. Yes, and we also call him Mama Maya sa mga Mama Microsoft Maya. Education Ambassador <laughs> Ko. Ayan. Let's hear it from Miss Grace Ko. Hello at isang magandang araw po sa lahat ng mga nanonood ng ating session ngayong Sabado. Welcome back to Tech Talk. This is our weekly bite-sized sessions in partnership with the Department of Education. So una sa lahat, no, gusto ko magpakilala. Ako po si Grace po. I'm one of the program managers supporting Microsoft and I've been working closely with DepEd for the past many years. And... Um, we welcome po namin una sa lahat ang lahat ng ating mga viewers ngayong araw na ito. Thank you so much for tuning in this Saturday and for spending your Saturday morning to learn something new um, with all of us. At binabati rin po namin sa Microsoft, of course, ang aming mga partners sa DepEd EdTech Unit na pinapangunahan ni Sir Mark C. At sinusuportahan po na ating mga EdTech specialists tulad po ni Sir Madge, Ma'am Rubilin, Sir Glenny, Ma'am Glenna. And of course, binabati rin po namin lahat ng Microsoft Education Ambassadors um, who are always present every Saturday. So mamaya po, minsan kapag may mga katanungan po kayo sa ating comment section, sinasagot po yan ng ating mga ambassadors. So for this uh, morning, no, we will be uh, doing another session on Tech Talks and napaka-special po ng topic natin today dahil it's all about fostering creativity in this pandemic. So we've invited some academic 
experts to share to you how they're actually um, implementing their creativity and innovating during these very difficult times. You know, one year into the pandemic, I think uh, a lot of us has really experienced so many challenges. But, you know, what's important is kahit na nandito to mga challenges na ito, we're actually consciously finding ways for us to be able to bridge the gap and still be creative in the way we teach our students and the way we are able to connect to them. So, dito, dito talaga pumapasok yung creativity din natin as educators so on how we're actually able to you know, find ways for us to still uh, make learning possible despite the pandemic. So, tulad nga po na ginagawa ng DepEd, uh, we're, we are coming up with so many ways for us to be able to reach our students. Diba? So, meron nga tayong DepEd TV, may DepEd Radio. Um, of course, dyan pa rin yung modules. And of course, meron tayong mga ganitong sessions tulad nito mga online um, enablements or online trainings. So, para po sa lahat ng mga teachers na nanonood ngayon, um, kami po ay talagang sa inyo. Kami rin po sa Microsoft. Ang dami naming natututunan mula sa mga practices na ginagawa niyo sa field. At hindi po madali ang inyong ginagawa. Kaya nagpapasalamat din po kami sa patuloy na partnership at patuloy na pagkilala no? at paggamit sa technology bilang isa sa mga maaring tumulong sa atin na gampanan ang ating mga roles um, despite the pandemic and despite our situation today. And so, uh, with that being said, sana po ay mag-enjoy kayo sa session natin today. And kung meron po kayong mga katanungan, maaari na pong gamitin natin comment section at nandyan po ang ating team from Odentes. And of course, ang ating Microsoft Education Ambassadors who would be um, more than happy to answer your questions. So, I hope you enjoy the rest of this uh, webinar. And again, in behalf of the team at Microsoft Philippines, maraming salamat po for spending your Saturday with us. Please don't forget to share this video and this on-demand recording of ng session natin today sa inyong fellow teachers, sa inyong mga estudyante, and of course, pati na rin po sa mga parents na nais po malaman ko ano ating mga training. So, maraming salamat po at magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Ayan, thank you very much, Miss Grace Ko. Ayan, no, sa, na, sa nasabi kanina ni Miss Grace, uh, sa panahong ito, nagiging mas creative yung mga teachers po. At the same time po, hindi lang po yung creativity talaga ang nai-enhance, lalo na po yung pagiging resourceful ng mga teachers. Tama po kayo dyan. So ngayon yes. po, again, Teacher Rubelin, bago natin magsimula sa talagang uh, program proper natin, bago natin pakilala yung ating first speaker. So tatanungin ko po muna ang pulso ng ating mga manonood. So may pag tayo ngayong umaga. So sa araw din pong ito, meron tayong two main speakers na may baong interesting topics po, Teacher Rubelin. No? So para sa ating lahat, so one, we'll, we will talk about something like creative arts. And then the other one will be discussing about game-based learning. Kayo po ba, Teacher uh, Rubelin, which speaker po kayo much excited to listen to? Um, actually po, uh, lahat po ng topic no interesting. Pero based from my personal experience, yung game-based learning talaga patok sa mga learning. kabataan, lalo na sa lower learners kasi elementary school teacher ako, Miss Zari. Tama Ayan. po kayo dyan. How about naman po kaya ang ating mga manunood ngayon? So I can see meron na po tayo ditong couple of um, couple of viewers. So kayo po, Kayo po mga nanonood right now, can you type in, saan po kayo mas excited? If you're excited about talking about creative arts, can you type in arts sa ating comment section? Or kung mas gusto nyo or mas interesting sa inyo ang game-based learning, can you type in game po sa ating comment section? Teachers, Ayan. can we ask for your participation? Ayan, para malaman oh. lang po natin kung ano po yung mas patok or mas... Uh, you know, mas may tunog po para sa inyo ngayong umaga. At habang naghihintay kami sa inyong mga mga response, which is, oh, meron dito Minecraft, Minecraft agad, specific. Meron din game na. Ayan. So, bago, so, okay, ang dami na, ang dami na nila, Teacher Rubilin. Teka lang, natataranta na ako. <laughs> Ayan, they're very responsive po kasi Teacher Zari Ayan, oh, yeah. Ayan. Natin, no? Both, meron dyang both Pero marami yung game uh, Specifically ba talaga Minecraft Ayan, arts meron din po So, meaning po, patok po yung mga topics natin this morning Teacher Zari Totoo po, ayan na, sumasabog na po yung comment box natin So, bago ang lahat, bago po man matabunan Gusto ko muna i-recognize yung mga gustong gustong bumate Na magandang umaga para po sa lahat Balikan ko lang po ulit, magbabackread ako Okay. 
So, wala po kasi talaga dito na si Sin Zone, eh. Tama po ba, Miss Rubilin? Yes, Hindi po dapat po. ganun. Ayan. So, pa-shout out daw po from SDO Antipolo, Teacher Ramil Luta. Hello po sa, sa inyo. Salamat po sa panonood. Mar uh, good morning din po. Watching from Bantaya National High School with pa-heart pa daw po siya. Teacher Marites Angkon, hello po sa inyo dyan. Good morning din po from SDO Pangasinan. Teacher Ayan. Michelle Runatay. Kayo po, teacher, meron po ba kayo dyang gusto pang batiin? Teacher Rubilin, ayun, ang dami pa nila Ayan, dito. marami po, uh, Teacher Zari, no? but may nakita din kasi ako sa comment box po na nagtatanong about Certificate of Completion. So, uh, oh, sure. Yeah, so, um, everyone po, may Certificate of Completion po tayo, no? Wow. Uh, pag natapos niyo po yung uh, Tech Talk sa umaga at may tech talk po sa hapon kasi hindi lang po yung morning session po. So isang certificate of completion po ang makukuha ninyo pag nasagutan nyo yung mga pa-quiz doon sa ating uh, LMS po. By the way, so nagtatanong po yung LMS po natin. Uh, punta po kayo sa www.training.gov.ph Ayan, no? So kahit nasa private or public school po kayo, kahit nga yung mga nasa uh, mga yung mga students ng ano po ng education kahit hindi pa sila graduate uh, others are also availing the trainings that we're giving here ayan, ayan. gumawa lang po kayo ng account ha doon sa ating LMS po at uh, training.dep.gov.ph ayan so, teacher Zari then by ayan. the way po pag nakumpleto pala yung episode po ng whole April So, we have three weeks sa April, di ba? So, makakakuha din po kayo ng Certificate of Recognition. National wow. Certificates po yun. Ayan. Ayan. So, libre naman po yan. So, wag nyo na pong palagpasin yung pagkakataon. Para sa mga students, take it as an opportunity. Magagamit nyo yan. Panlalagay din sa CV yan, sa curriculum vitae ninyo in the future. Ayan. So, Teacher Rubilin, ayo, syempre, hindi ako sin zoner eh. So, meron tayo dito, nagpapashoutout po. Teacher Maria Vicente Ga Vicenta Galvez, pa-shoutout daw po to all grade 10 science teachers of the Zamboanga National High School, West SDO, Zamboanga City. Ayan, so bali meron na rin po tayong mga respondents dito. O oh, si Teacher Jaisel Juliano po sabi niya arts and games yung interesting sa kanya. And the others like Teacher Leonarda, Teacher Zenaida, Teacher Presi, Teacher Maria Galvez as well, lahat sila sa game base naglo-look forward. At meron din dito mga gusto ng ayun, mga arts. Ayan, ayan. So, what else? Sige, so hindi ko po nabanggit, wag po kayong mag-alala, marami pa po tayong time. Just keep on hitting our comment section. Gustong gusto namin nararamdaman na active kayo at nakikinig at you are with us all throughout our session. Tama po ba, Teacher Rubelin? Yes po, at in connection din po, no, hindi din po ako sin zoner, nakikita ko si din po dito yung natapos na po pero certificate of participation. Yes po, kasi pag one Saturday lang, certificate of participation lang talaga ang makukuha nyo. Uh, pero pag nakumpleto po yung whole month po na mga episode, doon po ninyo makukuha yung certificate po of completion or recognition. Ayan. So wag po kayong mag list out. Yes, Ayan. so excited na po sila, Teacher Zari. Alam ko po yun, no? So para po masiguro talaga namin na ready na po kayo, pakilagay naman dyan sa ating comment box po yung hashtag tech. Talks. Ayan, tingnan natin. Hashtag Tech Talks sa comment sila, section, no? please. Ayan na. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan na. Hindi ka na mag-start kapag walang hashtag Tech Talks dyan. Nako. <laughs> <laughs> so, hanggang na nag-iintay kami dyan. Again, pa-shoutout daw po mula sa SDO Manila, Maria Claire Victo. Teacher, good morning po sa inyo. Ayan, so Teacher Rubilin. So, I guess... Tawagin na yes. po natin ang ating first speaker. Marami na po ang hashtag Teacher Zari. No? So, wag na natin silang uh, paghintayin sure. po. Ayan. So, do the honor po of introducing our first speaker, Teacher Zari. It's my pleasure. So, eto na nga. Gina, Gina tayo. So, to talk about how educators and parents can foster creativity through theater arts in a remote teaching setup for our first speaker. Ayan. So she was a Ford International Fellow that gave her opportunity to bring herself to NYU. Yes, po, teachers, NYU. You heard it right. New York University. 
Doon po niya natapos ang kanyang Masters in Educational Theater and and then after that pinagpatuloy naman niya ang kanyang doctorate degree for Applied Linguistics sa DLSU through their Faculty Development program. Hindi lang iyon, I believe she also shares her knowledge and talents to others by conducting theater workshops sa mga bata at even po sa mga nakakatanda, di ba po pang all ages, and even to people with special needs. Because why not, di ba teacher Robelin, theater arts, education, skill upscaling are talaga naman for all, for every yes. one. That's why yung ano po natin this Uh, morning tech talks for all, for all. Yes, so po. no one will be left behind po right wala talaga and inclusive okay. po talaga tayo ayan true ayan so our speaker is also i share ko lang din po flex natin to is also a recipient of the national commission for culture and the arts ncca 2021 national competitive grants for a project on comprehensively documenting bugkalot oral literature with accompanying teaching resources. So teachers, ladies and gentlemen, virtual round of applause naman dyan, here to share her take in fostering creativity through theater arts, Dr. Anrichi Balgos, Associate Professor of Literature from the La Salle University. Dr. Balgos, you may take our Ayan, you may good take morning, away our... Good morning, everyone. Hello, good morning po. Virtual hugs po from Deva Vizcaya. Sana po marami kayong matutunan sa talk po today and sa video na aking ipiplay. Thank you. For sure po yan. Alright, teacher. Bigay na po namin sa inyo ang... ang, ang... despite the pandemic. You look at your screen and you wait for the lecture to start. You worry about your internet connection. You turn off your camera and you wonder about requirements, deadlines, and the virus. You try your best to brush everything off and to just focus on your screen. Lights on. Interestingly, the internet gives a limited list of what possibly creativity could be. It says creative wireless speakers, creative banding, creative media, creative business, creative pizza, awakening creativity, testing creativity, creative cities, creative kids, creative leadership, and my first personal favorite, nine ways to become more creative in the next 10 minutes, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on and on. We might want to ask, when a world is used loosely, however, like an overflowing suitcase, it loses its capacity to convey precise meaning. When everything is creative, nothing is creative. When then is the way forward? What is creativity? Definitely, we, we would say that we need a level of creativity for rearranging our room and a different kind of creativity when we write a poem or choreograph a dance. Now, to help us understand this powerful word, I direct you to Tina Selig's Mobius stri Strip for Creativity. Act one, scene one. Tina Selig is a professor of practice in Stanford University's Department of Management science and engineering engineering she has written 17 books about innovation now you take a look at her concept and there are two spheres in the mobius strip the inner sphere which identifies attitude imagination and knowledge and the outer sphere which enumerates culture habitat and resources now you might want to ask how does each strip connect to the others or the entire Mobius strip to spell out this powerful word called creativity. Let's take the first strip, which is imagination. And I'm sure we have all been asked this problem. Five plus five is equal to, tada, 10. And our answer is definitely similar to that of our classmates and our teachers. 
And by this time, I'm sure you're able to realize that the way we frame our questions determines the answers we get. So if you have a limiting question such as this, you'll definitely have a limiting answer. However, if you rephrase the question into what numbers sum up to 10, you will have unlimited answers. So creative questions yield to creative answers. I'm very fascinated with uh, the Japanese art called Shindogu. You might find the photos on screen odd, weird, vague, absurd. But come to think of it, they're not useless. They have a purpose. So my question now is, would you allow a little bit of messiness in your classes so your students can come up with unuseless things? And even if they're, they seem unuseless at first glance, you actually activate your students' imagination. The next one is knowledge. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the more we think we know, the less we know. The less we think we know, the more we know. So we have to keep on paying attention. Use fresh eyes and don't stop learning. The next trip is attitude. If we look at creativity as a puzzle, then we wouldn't be able to complete it with a missing piece. However, if we look at it as a quilt, then all the resources available can be part of the whole thing. And we wouldn't be hesitant because we know that there's no wrong piece around us. Uh, we would realize that there's so much to do, there's so much to create, and you are, we are not restricted. Next trip is habitat. Don't you find it ironic that uh, we've been in a kinder classroom such as this, colorful, fun, and free, only to end up in jobs that limit us to desks or cubicles? Our habitat tells us how creative we could be. A creative habitat results in creativity. A restricted habitat will resort, result in restricted community members. Interestingly, some companies have created play space for their employees while realizing the fact that a creative environment would usher solid creativity in the workplace. Moving on, when we think about resources, we immediately think about budget or money. Although that's one, it isn't everything. Resources can be in the form of uh, skills, talent, support. We just really have to look around and find them. Finally, the last one is culture. It is the background music of any community. If you were to choose a song that you'd listen to uh, the moment you wake up before working, what would it be? Uh, it might be something happy or upbeat because you want to start the day strong. And in a community, culture is the background music. It what inspires, keeps, uh, stimulates uh, the members. And the culture encourages or discourages its, mem the, its a community members to be creative. Now, how do we put them all together? How do all the scripts connect to create this powerful innovation engine? Lights off, end of act one. You're still looking at your screen and still waiting for the lecture to end. You continue to worry about your internet connection, your camera is still turned off, and you haven't stopped wondering about requirements, deadlines, and the virus. You're still trying your best to brush everything off, still trying to just focus on the screen. Lights on, then the pandemic happened. Although it's been a year since the pandemic, we cannot turn off our innovation engine. I know, dear teachers, you haven't turned off your innovation engines. As teachers, we need to go on despite our hesitations. We need to take the lead to power through. Act two, scene one, feed your students creativity. During the pandemic, I learned how to uh, scale down my requirements and I actually focus on prioritizing the process. It's not about how many requirements my students will be able to 
produce, but how meaningful the process has been for them. And I was able to construct three questions that I always ask my students before they embark on any project or requirement. The first one is, what has to be undertaken? What is the decision that you have to make? And what does your intuition tell you? Surprisingly, these questions guided me as well as I looked at the pandemic as a circumstance. And looking at it as a circumstance, I was more realistic with identifying what resources I have and focusing only on what is possible. Act two seemed to experiment with online and offline strategies. So for those of you who can hold online classes, you embrace this platform and do not be afraid of technology. You explore the online platform, commit mistakes, and feel good about it and keep learning despite your hesitations. You maximize the use of email to reach out to your students. You can actually write notes on their modules if that's possible to inspire them or congratulate them. You can introduce uh, phone applications to your students that will help them uh, study better or easier. You can record your lectures through PowerPoint and maximize Microsoft Office in the design and creation of your modules. Act two, scene three, keep your sanity. You listen to music, watch online movies, pay attention to art, or just stop. Just breathe. Act two, scene four, connect with your students and colleagues uh, through email, like I said earlier, or short notes to keep them going, to make them feel that you care about them. You can also share your best practices to your colleagues. So how do you find the opportunity in the chaos? We go back to the Mobius strip and look at the two spheres, attitude, imagination, and knowledge, and culture, habitat, and resources. These two spheres are intertwined. That's why we cannot look at them separately. Also, pay attention to how imagination and habitat are parallel because our habitat is manifested by our imagination and the more imaginative we become the more accommodating to imagination our habitat becomes as well next pair is knowledge and resources the more we know the more resources we discover and the more resources we have the more knowledgeable we become and the last pair is culture and attitude and we said earlier that culture is the collective attitude of the community. The most amazing thing about Sea Legs Mobile Strip is that you can start anywhere. You can start with your imagination, and you cultivate that, look for resources, seek support from your community, keep on a positive attitude, know more about it, maximize resources. You can start anywhere. You can start with any strip in the whole mobile strip you just have to turn your innovation engine on okay act three offline drama activities later on i will share a video that will show how you can make use of drama activities online so for now i'll just read a couple of activities that you can do with your students offline during asynchronous classes so the first one is drama and writing. That's a nice pair. You can ask students to write a drama diary. Each day, students can write a brief entry about the following questions. So one question per day. What character would you want to play one day? What type of production is your favorite? What song from a musical do you imagine yourself singing? And then you can ask them to write a character diary. Each day, students write diary entries of their character. What would the character's thoughts be upon waking up while doing modules, staying at home, attending online classes? Drama, speaking, and listening create a wonderful trio. You can ask your students to do phone alone. Students pre-record themselves on a telephone conversation. You challenge them to get odd or weird or absurd props like banana, pen, hairbrush, or a shoe, and they pretend to talk to someone. 
pre-recorded monologues. Students pre-record themselves performing short monologues. If you do not do not have a text, you can improvise and do modify spoken word poetry. Uh, you let your students choose a song that has created a great impact on them, something that they know by heart, or their parents' favorite song, or the song of their life, and ask your students to recite the lyrics as if uh, they were the text of a spoken word poetry piece. Drama and reading, that's easy. You let your students do news reporting. They pre-record themselves retelling a newspaper article while in the role of a news reporter in the scene, or BFFs. Students pre-record themselves as talking about a character while pretending to be the character's best friend. Drama and arts, ask your students to design the stage of a play. If they were to perform it, on a face-to-face -face setup. Or they can do creative shots. Students make use of available costumes at home and take photos of themselves as different characters of a story or play. Drama and science, that's possible. You can do weird science. Students design their own at-home science experiment using everyday household items. They begin with a question they want to answer write up a materials list and a step-by-step -step description of the process and check in with a parent or guardian for feedback on their proposed plan. They conduct their experiment and document what happens. Drama and mat mathematics, of course, this is possible. This is exciting. You can ask your students to pre-record themselves telling the backstory of a math problem and justifies why the problem must be solved as soon as possible. What about drama and home economics? Sounds fun, right? A cook show. Students choose a recipe from a cookbook or create their own original recipe, document the process of making their dish with drawings and notes on paper. Include details about ingredients, measurements, and the steps involved in making this dish. And last, drama and pem. This is going to be a riot, but you can ask them to do jingle all the way. Students think about an item or product at home that has been unexpectedly useful because of quarantine. They write a jingle that could be used in a commercial to advertise the benefits of this random item or product. Where did we begin? When a word is used loosely, however, like an overflowing suitcase, it loses its capacity to convey precise meaning. When everything is creative, nothing is creative. What then is the way forward? Dear teachers, you may not be Einstein, but give yourself and your students the permission to be creative. And during this online teaching journey, we face every day to solve problems. Sometimes we are successful, sometimes we're not, but that's okay. But every day, with our commitment and our passion, we try to connect these colorful dots until we create a space, online or virtual, a classroom, which we eventually call our home, which we eventually call our family. Lights off and curtain call. Thank you. Today, we'll do a simple warm-up activity. This is called Pass to Pain. So I'd like you to turn on your cameras. Can you do that? Very good. So when you hear your name, you say the name of someone else in class. But once you said the name of someone else, you have to turn off your camera. Can you try that, please? Turn off your cameras. 
we will repeat this pattern several times. So remember the name of the person you said. Okay, let's start from the top. Can you turn on your cameras again? Perfect. Let's start the game. And the first name I'm gonna call is Gabriel. L. Rod. Tigger. Perfect! Yay! Now this time you keep your cameras turned off. I'm gonna call one person again and we'll do the same thing uh, over and over. Okay, so let me call Savior. Gabriel. Rod. L. Perfect. Okay, now this time, I want you to keep your cameras turned on. And then, when I call your name, you have to wave your hand. And then, call on another person and turn off your cameras after that. Is that clear, guys? Okay, I'd like to call on Rod. Savior. Gabriel. L. Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys, welcome back. So this time, we'll do a little uh, warm-up. To make sure that you're comfortable using your faces and uh, a little bit of your hands to express a couple of emotions today. So I want you to imagine that there's a pin on top of your nose and your main goal is to put all the muscles of your faces towards that pin. Can you do that? And this time I want you to stretch like a lion and you can make that bigger by Stretching your paws up there, reaching the sky. And stick your thumb out. Go. Okay, relax. Back to the pin. Stretch. Pause. And thumb out. Very good. Last. Go back to the pin. Perfect, Rod. You're doing great. And stretch. And your paws. Reach for the sky. And your tongue. Perfect. Okay, great. Massage your cheeks. And counterclockwise. Go back to the uh, clockwise massaging. And as you do that, you try to laugh. <laughs> Counterclockwise. <laughs> this time, you try to pretend that you're crying. <laughs> okay, great job. Perfect. Okay, hands on your shoulders. Roll them slowly. As you do that, you laugh again. <laughs> Counterclockwise. And cry or complain. <laughs> okay. Perfect, guys. Okay, now shake your hands to the front. Up, side, and down. Okay, great. Now, we're ready to our main activity, which is the funny faces activity. So, I'd like you to come in closer to the camera. I'm going to say lights, camera, action. When you hear the word action, I'd like you to come up with as many funny faces as you could. And when I say freeze, you have to keep whatever that facial expression is for a couple of seconds, okay? And lights, camera, action. Keep it going, go. Keep it going. And freeze. Freeze. Perfect. 
go. Right, camera action. Keep it going, keep it going, and freeze. Wow, what a transformation. Okay, and lights, camera action. Go. Keep it going, and freeze. Lights, camera action. And freeze. <laughs> Perfect, guys. It, uh, it was so much fun looking at you. Yay! Thank you so much. Okay. Now, we transition immediately to our next activity, which is the family portraits. So, we'll try to come up with as many family portraits as we could uh, with whatever concept of a family we have. So, it doesn't matter, guys, as long as it's a cohesive group that you know loves each other for that matter okay so at the count of three we all freeze and collectively paint a picture or a portrait of a family shall we do that making use of your facial expressions and a little bit of your hand gestures okay one two and a regular family portrait go Perfect. Yay. Okay, this time we move on from that to a portrait of an athlete family. One, two, and three. Perfect. Okay, nice. Uh, your facial expressions are very detailed and I like that you're experimenting with a couple of your hand gestures. So keep that going. From the athlete family, we move on to the <laughs> firefighter family. One, two, and three. Hey, perfect guys. Full of energy. Okay, this time we move on to <laughs> a portrait of a diva family. And one, two, three. Okay, very interesting. Okay, next from that, uh, we try to be a little edgy. So let's come up with a portrait of a rock star family. And go. Great, yay, what a transition. And the last, our finale, before we go back to our regular family portrait, uh, let's all come up with a portrait of a zombie family. One, two, and three. <laughs> I like that very candid uh, sound effects. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> and at the count of three, we go back to our original family portrait or a regular family picture. And one, two, three. Okay, yay. Thank you. Okay, so this time you will work with a partner to create scenes and dialogues, but we have to do it gradually. So for the first scene, I would want you to present okay, what you have, which is the scene making use of one syllable words. Can you do that? Okay, great. So let's start off with Gabriel and Xavier. Say curtain when you're ready and when you're done. So take your time, sweet time. Uh, make sure you have uh, enough time to breathe in and breathe out before you unfold for scenes and dialogues. Great. Curtain. Hi. Hey. Well. Hi. Bye. Wait! Curtain. Okay, thank you, Gabriel and Savior. I will save my comments until all the scenes have been presented. So let's move on immediately to L and Rod. 
Curtain. Yo! Stop! Yes? Pass? Where? Fine. Curtain. Okay, yes, your scenes are very fun to watch, but we have to level the scenes up by transitioning from one syllable scenes to two syllable scenes. And I know that you can do that way, way, way better. So this time, let's start off with uh, L and Rod. Curtain. Huli! Okay! Diba? Hey. Goodbye. Everything. Oh, no. Yay! Amazing. I like that you were very uh, comfortable using your facial expressions and uh, candid transitions from uh, emotions to bodily gestures to create your scenes effectively. Yay! So let's have Savior and Gabriel. Okay. Okay, seems like you really had fun doing that scene. Camera, Rod, and Savior, action. Curtain. Pre, ano ba? Umanga ka! Ikaw kaya? Lisensya mo? Lack ang helmet? Lack ang paki! Curtain. Ayan. Hello po. Good morning. We're back. Ayan, Miss Rachel. Ang galing-galing po ng ano, yung mga creative oh. strategies niyo po. Both synchronous at asynchronous, offline and online. Saludo po ako sa inyo. Pag kayo po ang teacher ko, hindi ako mag-absent. Promise. Ako, nag-message-message na rin po ako ng face ko dito. Medyo, medyo kinabahan na din po ako. So, sinasabi nila sa backstage. <laughs> Nabigyan niyo po ng... <laughs> Nabigyan po ng idea din po yung boss namin. Baka sa meeting ipagawa po yan. So, sige, practice tayo. Teacher Ruby, din re... G po ba kayo? <laughs> sige. Gusto niyo ako sa'yo? Gusto niyo pa i-facilitate ko kayo? So, pwede gawin niyo ay emotions. So, sabihin ko lang, uh, show me an image of happiness. Tapos pwede. Napakahira ah, po, Miss. Sige po. So, on the spot, game po, game. mga lima, mga lima <laughs> just for the two of you. Sige. So, gawin natin yung first one. Show me an image of happiness. One, two, three, freeze. Very good. From there, show me an image of hunger. Tutong. 
Okay. An image smile, of... <laughs> an image Masaya of... Masaya pong gutom. Masaya pong gutom. An image of uh, sadness. Uh, image na nakihintay ng mga modules ng mga batang hindi pa nakapag-submit and lights, camera, paano kayo maghintay? Action! And of course, yung the best image yung dapat, an image for hashtag Tech Talks. Paano ba? The hashtag. Very, <laughs> hindi ako marunan naman to. Uh, <laughs> may potential to ba maging ano, theater artist? Mas malakas, malakas potential. Ay, potential. alam niyo na, Salamat na lang po lahat, Sir Francis, by Odentes. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> I am po, Teacher Rubilin. Thank you very much, Dr. Balgos, for, for that napaka-fun and interesting topic. <laughs> Napagod po ako kakatawa. Saka sinubukan ko po talaga yung silly faces kanina. Grabe. Nakakatawa. Kung babalik po ako sa homeschool or, I, I mean, host, homeschool tuloy. Ayan, sa pagiging teacher, classroom teacher, Definitely gagawin ko po itong ano isang icebreaker or activity sa mga students ko. Talaga namang nakakaan eh. Nakakalabas ng pagkatao buong buong lamang lupa ko po eh talaga nagising talaga. <laughs> talaga naman. Ayun. So ngayon po buksan na natin ang Q&A session po natin. Teacher Rubidin for Dr. Bagos. Yes po. Uh Alam naman po natin no, na maraming nanonood. While waiting po sa mga uh, uh, more comments pa dyan, ayan, may katanungan po kami sa inyo, Miss Richie. No? Alam naman natin that a good classroom environment po always has some elements of creativity. At yun, naipakita nyo po, grabe. Yung the right mix of creativity along with curriculum po na it really helps students to be innovative and also encourages them to learn new things. Lalo na po yung ano, nakapag-express sila, nagiging creative po yung mga bata. So tanong ko po, Ms. Richie, uh, um, uh, how do you encourage po uh, teachers, lalo na po yung nakakapag-synchronous uh, online learning po sa mga students nila, uh, how can we, kasi ako, online teacher din po ako right now, so how can we transform the way students acquire um, creative education and how they apply it in the real life po? Mm. Claro okay, po very yung interesting. Yung yes, yes uh -huh. po. Tama po yan, Teacher Rubilin, kasi importante na makonect nila sa uh, daily life nila para magkaroon ng meaning or yung na intindi nila bakit ba namin ginagawa to. So, uh, a twin of creativity, parang kakambal ng creativity kasi ang reflection. So, it is important, katulad ng pinakita ko sa video kanina, na i-debrief natin yun. Kailangan natin i-process. Parang hindi lang tayo pwedeng maging masaya or tumawa. Maintindihan ng mga students. So, yung debriefing yun, itatanong sa mga students, what did you learn? How did you feel? Para rin may feedback ka na gustuhan ba nila. Baka yung ibang students kasi uncomfortable sila. And as a teacher, we cannot force them to do something that they're uncomfortable doing. And yung I wonder kung ano yung questions na meron sila para ma-process yun ng maayos. And like I said earlier, yung reflection, pwede tayong magpagawa ng mga, uh, do you call this, katulad ng mga pinakita ko kanina, uh, journals or diary writing para unti-unti from their own uh, and uh, they give themselves enough time to think about the process and tell you sincerely kung nagustuhan man nila o hindi. And for a teacher who's doing these creative activities, you have to be open-minded as well. Na hindi lahat pwedeng mag-work sa lahat ng uh, uh, klase. Uh, some students will love you with all their life and some students will hate you kasi nga iba-iba din ang mga studyante. Pero katulad ng sinabi mo, Teacher Ruby did, if you are able to establish a safe space and you give your students the feeling na it's okay to commit mistakes, it's okay to look silly, because anyway, para pareho naman tayong, sabi mo nga, na, nawawala ng dignidad, something like that. So uh, you, you do silly things together, you feel good about that, and you build each other. If students are able to feel that, Madali na lang yun. So, importante, kung gusto mo ng creative activity such as this, as a teacher, yung house rules at the outset of the of the class. Ang kinagawa ko dyan, which I think is effective, uh, first day ng klase, i-divide ko na sila into groups. 
kunyari, the lawmakers group, uh, artist group, musicians group, uh, kung ano-anong groups. Yung lawmakers group, they will pretend to be uh, lawmakers. Gagawa sila ng 10 house rules. Uh, yung music group, gagawa sila ng anthem. Yung, tapos, they will uh, create a, a world, parang a perfect world. Kunyari, first rule is we always smile. So, that, pag nakaka-problema ako sa, during the semester, pabalikan natin yung 10 rules. Ano yung sinabi nyo dito? Or kantahin natin yung anthem natin. From the start, uh, students feel that they're a family and they're there to support each other. So, importante, pag ganito mga activities, ma-establish mo na ang safe space or a supportive community. Pati yung mga mahiyain, later on, makikita nyo na hindi na kasi they know that everybody's there to support them. Okay lang magkamali. Minsan, hindi ko ginigradean yung mga warm-ups para maramdaman nila na, oh, sige, uh, we just shake it off yung anxiety natin. And wala muna ng grade kasi wala pa pa namang tinuturo. Gusto lang natin mag-enjoy muna. Thank you. It's more like setting the tone po talaga no, para sa mga ating estudyante. So we can encourage them to be confident as well and to engage with such activity. Tama nga naman. So teachers sa mga nanonood dyan, just build your foundation, your relationship with your students para naman talagang mag-cooperate sila sa inyo. Sino nga ba naman hindi yung susunod kung they feel safe diba, around you and the class? Tama nga naman. Alright, so here po, meron po dito some questions po from our chat box. So, I just want to raise one from Teacher Luis Misahon. Okay, I hope that, I hope I pronounce it right. So, good morning po. I am excited for the topic today. I would like to know po, what will be our indicators to know that the students are constantly well engaged in this method? Ayan, eh, although, yeah, sige po. Dr. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, important thing yung indicators, no? As a teacher, you should uh, doing these activities. You should learn how to multitask. Hindi ka lang pwede na focus sa sino yung gumagawa. Kailangan makita man kung sino yung hindi. So may mga caveat talaga or warnings for teachers who would like to do this. And of course, we cannot uh, deny the fact that some students can be very very distant. May mga reticent or shy students. At pag may mga ganong students, what I do is Non-participation is actually a participation. Not because they're not participating doesn't mean they're not part of the class. So quickly, ginagawa ko na lang, o sige, ikaw yung judge, or tulungan mo nga ako mag-manage ng class, o mag-check ka ng attendance. Tignan mo kung sino yung umaalis sa line kung may mga games. Kasi nga, uh, we have to understand the fact that some students do not engage because meron silang pinagdadaanan. Hindi naman lagi ayaw lang nila o gusto pa nilang subukan. So again, non-participation is participation. The fact that the student is not participating calls you to give him or her something that's, you know, something that's uh, that's uh, lower in terms of risk. Yung iba ginagawa kunyaring judge. And coming from an educational theater perspective kasi, uh, we don't use the term spectator anymore, but spec actor. So even students who are just watching, Kunyari, those students seated on their seats or sa online class, yung mga students na naka-off yung camera, meron silang participation. They're still part of it. It's just that you have to direct them and give them something that they can still do even without doing what the other students are doing fully. So very good question. Kailangan makita kung may nag-disengage at kung meron man, gagawin mo ng paraan para but engage sila in a different way. All right. Wow. Feeling. So, Ayun no, yun yung ano talaga as a teacher, yun yung pinaka-challenging po. Ano sa mga kabataan na hindi uh, confident sa sarili, mm -hmm. ayan. Pero since magaling naman si teacher, nahahanapan ng paraan. Yes. Yes. Hey. So meron pa ba no? tayong question from your aunt teacher Rubelin? Um, I think, yun lang po, pero flex ko lang yung nasabi ni Ms. Richie, no? Non-participation is still participation. Ayan, no? So, All right. oh, yun. <laughs> okay. So, ano? Yes. Oh, po. Uh, okay, add ko lang po, uh, Dr. Balgas and also Teacher Rubilin. Meron din po ako nakuha dito na isang question. 
or more like, uh, yeah, inquiry. Uh, Dr. Balgos, baka daw po pwede mag-ask kung ano daw po yung mga plays or movies or books na pwede nyo ma-recommend para sa mga teachers or parents para gamitin nila para sa kanilang students or mga anak. Just in case, you know. Naku, sobrang to dami, teach them dami po. Sobrang dami po. Meron akong classmates sa NYU dati na because of the pandemic, nag-create siya ng Google Drive for everybody all around the world. So, I can send the links to Mika of oh, right. Atente. Send ko sa kanya lahat yon And then, uh, tignan na lang natin kung paano yon maging available sa mga teachers. Pero, uh, sobrang dami po talaga. And in case... Uh, you can actually email me as well. Pwede kayong mag-email sa akin, kahit na ano lang. Yun, no? Tapos kung ano, available materials na pwede isasend ko sa inyo. Pwede rin akong <laughs> ini-invite na yung sarili. Pero anyway, I can pre-record something for you. Pwede akong mag-pre-record. Anong kailangan nyo? Maybe a 10-minute video at isend ko na lang sa inyo. Wow, that's a very kind of offer, uh, Dr. Balgas. For sure po, nako, pag binigay na po natin yung email niyo, bubuhos po ang mga teachers dahil pos- possible po na interested po sila para sa mga reference na yan. Ayan, so I guess, do we have more questions from our our viewers there? Double check lang po natin. Meron po ba dyan, teacher? Ah, hello po, teacher Angel- Angela Maki Sevilla. Hello po. Salamat po sa panonood. Ayan. So, pabati din daw po. Isingit ko lang po ah. <laughs> pabati daw po na magandang kaarawan kay Teacher Ma'am Angeline Rituria Navarro from Teacher Eliezer Riodiel. Okay. So, what else do we have here for our speaker? Okay. How about Dr. Bagos? Baka meron po kayong advice naman para sa ating mga teachers, educators po. Uh, on how to engage pa at mabuhos ang confidence na ating mga students. First of all, siguro mga teachers, kailangan din natin uh, i-consider yung sa sarili nating mental health muna. Kumusta hindi natin yung sarili muna natin. Uh, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, minsan kailangan lang natin tumikil. We just have, have to stop and we just have to breathe. Kasi we we cannot share what we do not have. So, kapag okay na, kahit na nahihirapan tayo, laban lang tayo, uh, uh, the best advice I could give is, of course, to, like I said earlier, prioritize the process. Uh, kung hindi magawa lahat ng requirements or feeling natin, hindi natin nagagawa lahat ng deadlines, okay lang yon. What's important is, we also usher our students to learn something uh, about them and about their classmates during this pandemic. Lagi tayong sisegue, katulad ng sinabi ni Teacher Ruby din kanina, sa, hindi lang sa pagpapahalaga, kundi sa pagkatuto. Sisegue tayo dun sa anong natutunan nila, paano ito magiging mahalaga sa kanilang personal na buhay, at paano ito makakatulong sa kanila para uh, mag-survive. Kasi ang goal lang talaga natin ngayon is mabuhay, di ba, because of the pandemic. However, yes. we have to turn some something good out of the bad situation. At yung favorite uh, term na ginamit ko kanina, we power through. We need to power through. Uh, it's okay to take risks, commit mistakes, at huwag tayong masaktan. We feel good about the mistakes that we commit because it is from them that we become better teachers. So, laban lang. Yeah, hey. Laban. Ayan, no? uh, by the way, sa pakikinig ko sa iyo kanina, uh, Miss Richie, nag-notes talaga po ako ng mga takeaways po. Uh, of course, that's for me. Then I am very happy na ma-share naman po ito, no? Um, yes, uh, ipinakita niyo po kanina, Miss Richie, number one po na na-note ko po na uh, let our learners learn with fun na Kasi nga, sa panahon ngayon, nasa pandemic, no? Pero students are always fun-loving po. And including creative activities with the curriculum that we have, it gains their interest for learning. Kahit nakabox lang sila sa uh, laptop, sa cellphone, o yung nakamood yun lang. Ayan, so nakakatulong po. At din yung up second po, yung freedom of expression po. ba it's okay to commit mistake pag sinabi ni teacher na, uh, give me a sad face. Minsan yung iba hindi na ibibigay yun ng tama eh. Kasi sila mismo hindi nakaka-express. Pero sa sinabi nga ninyo, Miss Richie, it's okay to commit mistake. Ayan. So pag ganun po kasi yung acceptance, malaki pong tulong yun sa isang mag-aaral. Uh, kung minsan kasi sa bahay mismo walang acceptance o parang wala silang uh, right na magkamali. Pero pag 
sa setting na ganyan, ayan, ang laki po ng impact noon sa real life talaga ng isang uh, yeah, mag-aaral. Ayan, kaya isinulat ko talaga yun, yung freedom of expression talaga, napakahalaga. Then yung emotional development, ayan. Then yung mental health nga. So maraming salamat po, uh, Ms. Richard. Salamat po, Dr. Ayan. Balgos. Thank you. Ayan. So, uh, may dagdag pa po kayo, Ms. Zari? Um, so far, wala na po, teacher. Although we have a lot of greetings com uh, sa ating comment section ngayong araw. So, siguro bago po tayo mag-transition sa ating next se segment, which is the Mentimeter po. Tama, Teacher Rebelin? Yes, so, well, favorito mm -hmm. ko yan eh. <laughs> <laughs> so, while we are setting up, babatiin ko lang po itong mga teachers natin na super active talaga sa ating comment chat box at walang humpay sa pagsisay good morning at bumate na magandang umaga sa lahat ng ating manonood. Unahin ko na po dito sila Teacher Mary Rose Cabios Kiyoyo. Good morning watching from PIS Anan National High School Division of Antique. Wow! Ayan. No, ang yung manunod talaga. Meron din po tayo dito from Lariza na parang good morning, watching and listening from uh, Kimanait Elementary School, Pangantukan, South Bukid noon. Ayan, from and then, yan. And then, pa-shoutout naman daw from, uh, sorry, Teacher Ruel Corquera, pa-shoutout from, uh, from SDO Ifugao. Ayan, right. meron din from Roland Ordanias. Good morning po from Central Escolar Integrated School. Hello, good morning po dyan. And from teacher Genevieve Magbanua, Ben Bendisho, medyo nauutal na ako, sorry po. <laughs> good morning po from Tungkong Manga Elementary School. And from teacher Lariza Naparan, good morning watching and listening from Kimanait. Panagod at South Bukit. Ah, nabagit na pa pala yan. Ayun. So, ayan. Still watching si Teacher Chrislan Arkay. Okay. Ayan. So, nabati na po natin sila. Ready na po yung Mentimeter natin, Teacher Zari. Alright. Go ahead. Yes. So, Let's ayan this, po. Teacher. Yes, yung tanong po natin. What are the words related and connected to creativity and innovation? Uh, so, para maka-join po kayo sa activity na ito, Please go to www.menti.com and use the code 41295256. Ayan. So, we are so excited sa mga ibibigay niyo po mga words. I know po marami po kayong natutunan from our speaker. Yes, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of enlightenment and insights na gusto niyong i-share. Siyempre, Para po sa amin na nagbibigay sa mga speakers, para din po sa mga speakers, gustong-gusto po nila nakaka-receive ng mga feedback or mga responses galing sa mga listeners nila. And I'm pretty sure, teachers, you can relate to that. Tama po, Teacher uh, Rubelin? Yes po. Iba kasi pag nagtuturo ka, di ba, uh, ang indicator po nun kung effective ka, yung mga feedback na nare-receive mo, Totoo. sa mga uh, viewers or listener mo, lalo na kung sa kung teacher ka, yung mga students feedback talaga very important yon. Exactly. Yes. So mga, so teachers, may we ask for your response? So again, go to www.menti.com and use the code flashed in your screen, which is four one two nine five two five. Six. Ayan, nakikita ko, Teacher Zari, may respondents na po tayo, no? Pero syempre, lagyan natin ng konting excitement. So, mamaya na ipapakita. Ayan. Siyempre, kailangan, di ba? Kailangan okay. na ipasurprise tayo, ganyan. Ayan. So, I guess po I yung ipapakita nito, parang word cloud po siya, uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ayan na. Ayan, Ayan na nga. So, yung highlighted words dito, no, Teacher Zari, uh, the words related and connected to creativity and innovation are critical thinking. Ayun, nakikita ko dyan. Yes, uh, ah, meron ano din dito, ma'am, interesting, oh, vulnerability. Wow. Cre yes. Associated with creativity and innovation. Ma Naalala ko po dito, um, are you familiar with Brené Brown, Teacher Rubelin? 
public speaker. Oh. Yes, public speaker po siya and a university professor po ng, I think, University of Houston. Meron siyang talk about vulnerability and associated ito sa creativity. So, kung wala doon tayong vulnerability, yung pagiging creative natin, hindi siya mag-work. Kasi di ba, when we create nga po, when, when we are being creative, gumagawa tayo ng different things. We want different things. Right? So, kung, kung different uh, ideas yan and you want to expose it, you want to show it, kailangan vulnerable tayo sa mga possibilities when we let it out to the public or when we let it out to other people for them to see, for them to uh, experience your idea. Okay. Ayan. So, so marami na po yung words dyan po, no? May word na talaga na enjoyment, fun. Yan. Meron din po uh, Outputs, yes, kasi output-based po uh, yung mga activities natin to be creative and innovative. And Ayan. here we have the word intelligence. Yes, being creative is actually a type of kind of, of, of intelligence. Yan. Kahit sa napakaliit na creativity lang, like for example, yung mga bata, kahit yung napaka silies, uh, silies action nila to do something, to get something, is actually called creativity na talaga. And it is unintelligent. I mean, intelligence. So, ayan. Napaka-interesting ng mga words na binibigay sa atin na ating mga uh, viewers right here. Ayan. So, imagine. Ayan. Talagang nagtitot ako ng head kasi gusto kong basahin. <laughs> <laughs> Ito kong basahin yung, yung mga nakalagay dyan. So, teka lang dito ako sa kabila. Writing. <laughs> I, I saw a word discovery. Ayan. Discovery. What ano else? Pa? Yes, so, di, may word din po na production. Di pa pa creative ka. Nagpo-produce ka talaga ng na isang uh, uh, dang, mm, output. Ayan. Yes. Exactly. Yun, actually, yun yung pagkakaiba ng creativity and innovation. Although related sila, syempre may difference sila. What I know is that creativity is actually the idea and then the innovation is actually the um, putting the idea into action. If I'm not yes, mistaken. Po. Pwede po. Ayan. Mm -hmm. Mayroon pa po dito, yung enjoyment po. I love the word. Kasi dapat uh, pag gusto mo talaga yung ginagawa mo, pag nag -e enjoy ka lang, di ba? Parang uh, mas ano po, fulfilling po yung bagay na ginagawa mo. Yes, yeah. and if you are enjoying something, mas lalong nag-generate ng creativity. Mas maraming creativity, mas marami tayong ideas na na gagawa or naiisip or na share mm -hmm. so, Ayan, no? So, again, maraming salamat po sa mga participants who responded po sa question na ito. So, nakakita po talaga namin na uh, kayo po ay nakibahagi ng inyong mga kaalaman. Ayan, no? Ayan. So, again, Teacher Rubilin, masyado napupuno na ulit ang comment box natin. Bawasan natin ng konti. <laughs> yes, po. So, so, meron po tayo dito uh, from Teacher Juliet uh, Vismanos. Uh, good AM daw po watching from Davao City. Okay, so meron din tayo dito from Teacher Genevieve. Uh, Teacher Genevieve Benedicio, Benedicio, sorry, good morning, from Tongkong, Manga Elementary School, and from Teacher Bendet Dolor. Oh, we have a question here. How do you encourage students to use their own picture and not cartoons? Oh, kung ikaw yung teacher nun, uh, Mizari, what will you do? <laughs> Interesting question. So, ganito yeah. po kasi yan. <laughs> Nagkwento. Okay. I used to be I used to be a teacher di po talaga sa classroom, no? So if I if I were in that kind of situation, for me to encourage them again, be um building on from our previous speaker, di ba po? Of course, you have to set the tone, you have to set the environment first for your students to be confident in yes. showing in sh in expressing themselves, especially showing their own picture, uh, giving them giving them like um an tawag nga ba doon? Anong term yun? Nakalimutan ko na. Um giving them like uh yung pupurihin nyo sila kung, kung if you think kasi if kasi tayo teachers, ba? Sometimes nakikilala natin yung mga personality ng mga students natin. So malalaman natin, ma-identify natin sino dito yung merong Konting self-confidence, sino dito yung confident talaga. So, doon sa mga nangangailangan ng support, moral support, yan, bigyan lang natin sila ng konting motivation by 
say uh, by giving them encouragements diba saying that they are good that there's nothing there's no no reason for them to be shy showing their pictures ayan because everybody naman sometimes talaga hindi photogenic diba ayan. so that's the reason naman po para sa akin naman po teacher Zari uh, scenario based po or case to case based po mm-hmm. pag nasa formal na virtual classroom po like yung ginagamit namin sa Microsoft Teams po i encourage them talaga to use their of course real name kasi nga formal mm-hmm. setting yon though yung iba naman uh, may mga case din na we can consider no pero kung sa social media po uh, i really don't uh, i mean i respect them why because we have also data privacy kung ayo nilang mm-hmm. i lantad yung mga totoo po nilang mga photos okay lang po talaga pero pag formal setting nga uh, lalo na may virtual uh, classes kami or in relation siya sa virtual classroom. So, yun, I encourage them na ganito. Importante lang kasi, uh, we need to explain nga uh, what's yes. the relevance of uh, requiring you na gamitin yung totoong picture nyo, totoong pangalan nyo. Yun lang. Siguro communication lang din. Kasi yung mga kabataan naman, pag we able to lay down yung importance ng gagawin nila i know po they will follow us din naman and yes the spark po kasi yun ng learning di ba pero mm-hmm. kung minsan kailangan nilang magtago in a cartoon ay nila pakita yung totoo siguro po yun nga we need to boost their self esteem so may mga factors din po kasi behind yung iba nga sa yung yung sa ano classes namin minsan teacher Marty yung iba ayaw mag open ng camera Yes. Okay, they are not prepared or they are not okay during that time. Okay, may mga case talaga na. So, scenario-based lang or case-to-case based lang din. Sa bagay po, no? Talagang pinagbabasihan din po natin yung mga environment and the situation nga naman. Hindi ko naisip yun. Siguro kailangan ko na talaga bumalik sa classroom set para bumalik <laughs> yung mga ideas, mga etiquette na mga ganyan-ganyan. Pero ayan. So, what else do we have here? So I, uh, we hope we answered your question, teacher, and we satisfy your expectation. Ayan. So what do we have here? Ayan. So may pa shout out daw po dito from teacher Chrislan Arkay. Shout out to all that ed ed tech unit staff from Bohol. Ayan. So excited na po sila sa susunod po na topic natin, teacher Zari. Sige Ayan, po. No? Ayan. Sige po. At ito na nga, sige na, mag-move on na po tayo, teachers. And let's proceed to our second speaker. Ready na yes. po ba kayo? Yeah, naalala ko kanina, tinanong mo sila, teacher, di ba? Yung anong yes. gusto nila? Being creative ba? Arts ba? O game, mm-hmm. di ba? So ano kaya ang susunod, teacher Zari? Hulaan nyo po ba? Hulaan nyo po? <laughs> <laughs> so it is gonna be the game based learning okay so ipapakilala ko sa inyo ang ating speaker para naman pag-usapan how educators and parents can nurture innovativeness through minecraft in a remote teaching setup we were given the privilege to invite one of my one of minecraft's global mentor he is a graduate of philippine normal university and took his graduate degree units in the la salle university manila for teaching general science and basic education and that's not all he is in fact also a microsoft certified educator microsoft innovative educator expert microsoft education ambassador microsoft specialist associate microsoft innovative educator fellow a google and certified educator an Apple teacher and learning leader, and the list goes on and on po. He even participated in various national and international education technology speaking engagements and events. He is also known as someone who enjoys Switch and PlayStation games. Now, he will impart his expertise with us and share his advocacy in game-based learning and teaching. Teachers, Parents and students, ipinapakilala ko po sa inyo, Mr. Simbol Fabelon, Education Technology Coordinator of the La Salle Sobel. Sir Simbol, good morning po sa inyo. Good morning, good morning po, po everyone. Good morning po. A warm greetings to everyone who are watching uh, this live right now. At sa mga manonood po ng recording later, hello po sa inyo. Isang mapagpalang sabado po sa inyong lahat. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, to be of service uh, sa inyo po, uh, to share 
what we have, what I what I did, and what we have in school. Thank you uh, very much uh, to Odentas Technologies, to Microsoft, and to DepEd for making all of this possible. Po. Okay, po, I would like to thank the host for the very generous introduction. Ako po ulit si Sim or si Teacher Sim. And I'm passionate about games. Ayan, mahilig ako maglaro. <laughs> I'm passionate about games and bringing the fun and engagement of games. Kaya siguro na, ano, na incline ako sa Minecraft. Kasi I'm really into games and I want to bring yung experience ng paglalaro, uh, the fun, the engagement of games into the classroom. So shout out sa lahat ng DepEd teachers at sa mga co-teachers ko dyan sa La Zubel. I'm happy to say that we in La Zubel uh, have also reached a number of DepEd schools uh, through a professional development program wow. that we call Start Ed. And if you're interested, uh, please check our uh, Facebook page at DLZ Spark Ed. So mga naka-attend na po ng Spark Ed dyan ng Lasal Zubel, hello po sa inyo. Sana po, attend po kayo ulit. Ayan po. Uh, for the next 35 or 30 minutes or so, allow me to uh, tackle to the topic of innovation, creativity, collaboration, critical thinking, uh, problem solving. Kaya ako ba lahat? <laughs> Masyado marami. I will try. <laughs> Kaya yan, sir. Kaya. Skills, uh, in the lens of us teachers, parents, and students uh, in a remote learning setup. Uh, may mga nuances on how to do Minecraft in a remote learning setup. So we'll check out a game. Uh, this is no ordinary game. Uh, if I may say so, this game is called Minecraft Education Edition. So sa mga, nas, sa mga live ngayon dyan, um, share naman kayo kung experience in playing Minecraft. Okay, so this game has been empowered by Microsoft and several other passionate educators like me and like you uh, who wants to bring this closer uh, to the education landscape and to the classrooms. And now more than ever, I really believe that the deaf ed schools and students are one step closer into creating their own success stories uh, on game-based learning and integrating Minecraft in the curriculum. So I hope po, marami, marami kayong mapulot and I hope excited kayong uh, makita yung mga isi-share ko. Okay, sure, and, for sure? this, and for this, I have uh, two very simple objectives lang naman. Kasi parang grad school class yung kay, ano, kay Miss Kitchi <laughs> kanina. <laughs> okay, ang dami ko natutunan. Ito parang PLC or LAC session lang. For this, I have two very simple objectives. The first one is uh, promoting game-based learning in Minecraft as enablers of fostering 21st century skills to our learners. And the second one is to show some examples uh, from our school's best practices in relation to this. Okay, po. Di ako pwede mag-pin ng sa comments, right? <laughs> okay, good. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Uh, kay Ms. Adrian, Ms. Mary Fe, Ms. Mary Rose. Good morning. Okay po, moving on. Okay. So without further ado, let's get into uh, the discussion. So am I saying that Minecraft has a niche of effectiveness as a learning tool in the classroom? So the short answer is, Yes, and this is backed up by a number of research. Okay, uh, I would also like our participants to pay attention, pay attention to ha on how uh, this can meet its purpose. So if we are all going to do a web search and read literatures uh, that supports Minecraft Education Edition or even Minecraft, kasi nung umpisa Minecraft lang siya and then it was empowered by Microsoft, naging Minecraft Education Edition na siya, Okay, if we're going to uh, look at literature, a common thing that we may see is that uh, when a game is used in a well thought of lesson design or project, okay, ang result, it will enable the fostering and the promoting of 21st century skills. Katulad ng mga minention natin kanina. So, may kita natin magkakaroon ng collaboration, communication, problem solving, critical thinking, and so on. All those essential skills. Okay. So, that means, huwag natin kalimutan, may disclaimer. Hindi lang natin gagamitin yung um, game just for the sake of the students playing it. There is an aspect of putting together uh, the game into a well thought of lesson. So, kailangan mag-isip tayo paano natin gagamitin yung game uh, para makapagduro. 
So may responsibility tayo as educators to learn the game. That's very important. So hindi natin pwedeng skip yung process na yun. Hindi pwedeng, gusto ko mag-Minecraft, pero I don't want to learn it. Eh. I'll just ask my students to play with it and then do this and that. No, we have to learn it, of course. That's prerequisite. Uh, may proseso para pag-aralan yung Minecraft. And we are inviting everyone to uh, take part in the different um, initiatives of DepEd, Microsoft, and Odent Odentes into learning Minecraft more. Okay, so may responsibility tayo to understand ano yung capabilities ng Minecraft. Kasi pag di natin alam yung capabilities ng Minecraft, paano natin gagawin yung lesson? Okay, so kailangan alam natin yung mga kayang gawin sa hindi kayang gawin ng Minecraft. And after that, pag, alag, pag nakapag-train na tayo, we have spent some time pondering about it. Uh, we know the capabilities. We have thought of uh, our lesson. Then we can now create the opportunities for learning. Ayan po. So moving on to discovering more of Minecraft in education, uh, let's talk about very briefly, uh, let's talk about an overview what it is and paano natin siya i-utilize for teaching and learning. Okay, so Minecraft is a video game uh, that mainly features destroying, crafting, combining, and building different kinds of blocks. So, mapansin nyo, most of the items in Minecraft are cubical. So, a player inside Minecraft has access to a variety of blocks or cubes. So, minsan hindi siya block, minsan item, uh, item siya. Pero itong mga items na to or blocks, pattern siya from real-life objects. Kaya it gets close to home when we use it. So, meron tayong mga simulation ng wood, ng stone, water, air, plants, and many more. So, it was made... The, it was designed like that to simulate uh, objects that we are familiar in real life. And in a teaching and learning standpoint, we can use this feature and creatively align it with learning outcomes, standards, competencies, and objectives. At ito po mismo yung pinaka-essence ng game-based learning. My game, uh, tingnan natin yung competencies and standards natin. Gawa tayo ng lesson and then we implement it. So that's game-based learning in a nutshell. Okay. So, some examples probably, um, masyado siyang maraming examples on construction, for example, building earthquake-resistant houses, uh, solving the problems of flood-prone area. The possibilities are actually endless for a lesson, and the only limit uh, to this is our creativity. So, patasok po talaga yung creativity natin. Kaya, kaya kung gusto po natin mag-create ng something customized and unique uh, to the needs of our learners, Okay, ang limit lang po is our own creativity. But again, uh, emphasizing we have to prepare before implementing this to our classroom. So moving on, students can be assigned to work in groups. So may, collabor may collaboration feature po talaga siya. Uh, by joining their classmates' world or their teacher's world. So kung, kung familiar po kayo sa mga game, pwedeng mag-co-op mode. So tawag po sa game, gaming jargon, co-op. Pwedeng mag-co-op. So, for example, I or a classmate can host a world and then pwede yung pumasok dun sa world ko. Pasok kayo sa world ko, guys. Okay. There's also an in-game chat function kung saan pwede tayong mag-usap, uh, enhancing communication among the players. Okay. So, uh, and then, for starting teachers, uh, there are tons of built-in lessons. Huwag kayo matakot. Meron na mga ready-made lessons that we can assign to students, sa mga starting teachers. And this can be accessed from the Minecraft library. Customizable naman siya. Uh, the course, they are customizable. My lesson plans. Pwede natin i-download yung mga lesson plans from the official Minecraft education website. I think it's education.minecraft.net. If you go there, you will see a lot of lessons. You can also inquire uh, in that website kung paano maging global Minecraft educators. I'm encouraging everyone to check out that, that website and apply to be a global Minecraft educator soon if you're not yet in that position. Okay, next. Okay, adding another layer of personalization to the game, there are several functions uh, that we can better customize uh, para maging personalized lalo yung experience ng students and ng teacher of a uh, So this will include game modes, yan, my creative, my adventure mode, May levels for hosting, yung mga pasok sa world, pwede sa world ko or sa world ng students, pwede na i-customize yung 
host permission, pwedeng um, visitor lang or pwedeng co-builder yung papasok sa world. So that, that can be customized. And other teacher settings, whichever is most suited uh, for the situation at hand. So pwede natin i-ask yung students na mag-work solo lang. Pwede rin in control groups, we can do that. The teacher can host or even visit the game world that's live and oversee what's happening uh, real time. Pero in a remote learning setup, there are nuances, of course. Minsan problema talaga yung internet connection and this is a program that uh, will require internet connection at least uh, during multiplayer mode sa kapag nag-login. So pag nag-login ka, kailangan naka-online ka or may internet connection. Pag mag-multiplayer, mag kailangan din ng internet connection. Okay, and then, pero once you're already in the game as a solo player after the login, I think even if you cut off the internet connection, you can still play. Okay, in a remote learning setup, pwede issue yung internet connection, right? Okay, so issue yung paglalaro synchronously, sabay-sabay tayo, naglalaro in the same world. Okay, so, pero there are recommended strategies to overcome that. Okay, so one of the recommended strategies to overcome that would be to ask the students again uh, to uh, build individually at first, asynchronously. So, pwede hindi muna sila sabay-sabay nag-build. Pwede si player one lang muna uh, mag-build na yung part niya. And then, isa-save na yung file. Okay? And then, isa-send niya kay player two. O player two, ikaw naman nag-build ng 2 p.m. for example. Pagtapos na si player two, o player three, ikaw naman mag-build ng 3 p.m. So, pwede silang mag-usap like that uh, to overcome that uh, problem of internet stability kung hindi kaya na synchronous and live nagbe-build yung isang grupo ng mga students. So that can be done. And there are several contests I remember that that actually apply that mechanics. Okay, next. Uh, let's explore. How are we going to engage the students to reflect what they're learning um, when they're using Minecraft? So meron tayong pwedeng mga tawagin um, artifacts of student learning inside Minecraft. So there are several tools in the game uh, that we can use Para makita natin kung meron ba talagang pagkatuto yung mga sudyante. We can even combine how we use them. So meron tayong camera and portfolio. These are two different blocks or items in Minecraft. Uh, we also have the book and quill. That's just one item. Although it's called book and quill. We also have uh, chalkboards. So there is a small board called the slate. A medium-sized board called the poster. And a large board called the board. And then for the advanced teachers and students, pwede natin i-program yung mga tao doon. They're called NPCs or non-playable characters. Pwede natin silang bigyan ng dialogue. Pwede natin silang bigyan ng command. Pwede natin silang gawing teleporter. Okay, they can execute different kinds of uh, stuff inside Minecraft. The possibilities are endless kapag kaya mo nang gumamit ng programmable NPCs. And the world becomes more alive with NPCs. NPC again is another... Uh, gaming jargon. So again, NPC means non-playable character. So allow me to, to give you a very quick demonstration, at least nung paggamit nung camera and portfolio sa kabook and quill. Okay, ako rin yan, is a screen record ko lang. So to give a very quick demonstration about the tools that I was um, talking about a while ago, so for example, this is a project that my teacher assigned to me, create a periodic table and then identify, for example, the patterns that we can see in the periodic table. So what I can do to show what I've learned is by using um, the camera and the portfolio to screenshot um, parts of the periodic table and then provide an explanation, uh, for example, on those uh, parts that I have screenshotted, if that is a word. Okay, um, so what I'll do is I'll go to my inventory by pressing E, then find my camera first, put it in my item number one in my hotbar, find my portfolio, put it in item number two in my hotbar, Okay, and then for example, I want to take a screenshot of uh, group 1A over here. So I'll select my camera, then I'll right click on it, then I get a screenshot. Now, interestingly, um, whatever screenshot I take using the camera gets stored in my portfolio. So if I select my portfolio and I right click on it, so I have 
um, a num- all the screenshots that I took, and I can even put a caption, uh, a small uh, short string of text that can describe what that is. If I'm already satisfied with my portfolio, if this abides with the prompts that my teacher gave me, for example, I can export it and then it it at the end of class. That's one way to do it. Okay, another way to document um, what a student has learned is to use um, or is to do something like this. So it looks like a, a book holder. There's a book that you can interact with. And then there's a board. Uh, probably can put text there to describe what this book is all about. So how do we do something like this? So we use the book in quill item. So go to your inventory, find the book in quill. So book in quill, it's this item. Put it in your item. Slot number three. But this time you have more room for more text. So for example, I'm going to describe or write about group 1A over there. And if I'm done with everything that I need to put here, I've answered all the questions that my teacher gave me. I can click sign that prompts me to enter a book title. For example, my title for this book would be group 1A explanation, EXP. I can sign and close. It becomes a glowing book this time. That means it's uneditable already. I cannot put any more text or edit what I have um, placed before it. So if I want a new one, I have to um, use a new book and quill. So how do I do this setup? Um, I have to use the lectern. So in the inventory, find the lectern. Okay, put it in your item slot. Then place it on the ground, and then select your uneditable signed book, and then right-click that book on the lectern. So if you have a setup similar to that, your teacher goes in, your teacher can read what you have wrote. Just You can use a board to prompt your teacher what that book is all about, something like that. Okay, I think that went well. So I can just imagine if I did that live, the lag means on your Minecraft ko. Okay. Uh, in addition and similar to the screen recording that I did, we can also ask the students to screen record whatever they created inside Minecraft. And while they are recording, they can navigate uh, their build and explain concepts uh, based on the teacher's instruction. So I remember maraming competition in Minecraft, ito yung way nila of submitting the project. So they don't uh, check the actual world, they check a screen recorded explanation of the students navigating the world and explaining a concept. So similar to uh, the example that I just gave you. So a usual, a usual screen recorder that I ask my students to use is Flipgrid. Sino po ang gumagamit ng Flipgrid sa inyo? So I'm sure maraming gumagamit ng Flipgrid. So pwede mag-screen record doon. So that's what I ask my students to use. And then do na rin yung submission. So two in one siya. So shout out sa mga gumagamit ng Flipgrid, sa mga Flipgrid student voice ambassadors who are watching right now. But of course, if uh, you really want to thoroughly check uh, the student's work, pwede mong ipasubmit mismo yung file. Okay, so meron tayong paraan para makuha yung accomplished world ng student. Okay, kailangan si student i-export uh, niya yung world. At pag in-export niya yung file from Minecraft, it becomes a .mc world save file. So itong .mc world save file na to, pwede mo naman siyang i-import. Kung teacher ka, i-import mo yung file papunta sa Minecraft game mo. And then you can open it as a world and then check it yan. So, pwede pong ito yung mga paraan ng uh, pag-check natin ng uh, students' um, achievement of learning outcomes, uh, standards, competencies, and so on. Okay, so moving on, marami pa. Okay, there is a ton of features in Minecraft. Unfortunately, 35 minutes uh, will not be enough. 
to cover all of the mechanics of the game. Marami pa, marami pa akong pwedeng i-share actually. But if we will invest the time and effort in training and exploring Minecraft, I am very hopeful uh, that we can produce similar positive results like the success stories ng mga global educators na nakikita natin uh, who are using Minecraft. And of course, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share with you some of my success stories and the school's um, integration of Minecraft into the curriculum. So there are clubs, there are teachers, there are classes. Uh, even our student council and our librarians use Minecraft for their program. So it's a very exciting journey. Nagsimula lang siya, um, parang ako pa lang yung nagma-Minecraft dati. <laughs> Or I don't know if merong ibang nagma-Minecraft dati. Nagsimula lang ako sa club. And then, eventually, parang naging culture na siya. Parang dumami nung dumami yung gumagamit ng Minecraft sa school. So don't be afraid of baby steps. Magsimula po tayo mag-Minecraft right now. Okay. So allow me to share with you, start sharing with you those um, said um, examples uh, from our end. Vera sa Zubel, may examples. Starting off, uh, is a project that I presented in the recently concluded Digital E2 or Education Exchange last September 2020. I was very fortunate uh, na napili yung presentation ko to be featured in that event. So, nakausap ko si Anthony Salcito. <laughs> Nakakaba nung ini-interview niya ako. Um, if na panod yun, nakai nakai yata rin dun ako. <laughs> okay, I shared about a performance task. Uh, entitled, uh, I I actually entitled the Terraformers. Okay, you can view. I'm encouraging you to view my full sway presentation. Uh, using the short link, it's up there in the slide. The short link is um, bit.ly/slash/minecraftmars. If our host can pin that in the comment section, that would be great. So shout out sa mga gumagamit ng Sway. Sway. Sway is a very nice tool for creating website-like presentations. And this is what I did. Uh, and luckily, napili yung project. So again, the link is bit.ly slash Minecraft Mars. Ayan, alam niyo ba? <laughs> Pupunta dapat kami sa, ano, sa Australia. Hindi nagka-pandemic. So sayang, hindi ako nakapunta sa Australia. Okay, so shown here, ito dapat yung ipipresent doon. Pero naging digital naman siya, so no regrets naman. Okay, so shown here in this slide right now are the scaffolds of activities leading to the construction stage and project evaluation. So marami siyang proseso. So for me, creativity involves organization. Okay, tandaan mo natin yun. Uh, magiging creative tayo, pero kailangan ng certain level of organization kasi we're handling... Um, students in their formative years, kailangan talaga nila ng gabay. So while we are fostering and promoting creativity, there is a level of organization that we need to um, to do and implement. Okay, so you have scaffolds of activities there from make, getting the students ready conceptually. So from term 1 to term 3, pinaprepare namin silang maging maalam sa earth science. And then term 2, alam niyo ba, uh, just sharing, uh, creativity, or wala tayong monopoly ng creativity, no? So, yung everyday experience natin, you don't know, that can inspire you, and that can translate into a lesson design. Ako, nanonood ako ng anime. <laughs> I'm a weeb. Uh, nanonood ako ng mga, net, ng mga Netflix movies, and then I watched this Netflix movie called The Space Between Us, and then, um, I was inspired na nakita ko dun, may, may, may Mars Day sila. And then, oh, nga, no, but because, but because, sabihin sa mga students that they can also create their own Mars base using Minecraft. And then it started there. So, again, um, use your everyday experience. Wag tayo magkulong, use your everyday experience, explore um, movies, and then you'll, you'll never know, makakakuha kayo ng idea dun for a very good project. Ayan. So, shown here are scaffolds of activities that will lead to the construction stage. So, hindi agad construction agad, ha? Hindi agad-agad magpapa-construct nito. So, kailangan ipiprepare natin yung mga students. And then, of course, one very good part of this design is merong evaluation. We have to evaluate what happened. We have to process anong mga nangyari along the way. Uh, and so, para magkaroon ng metacognition yung students. O, oh, may metacognition. <laughs> okay, all parts of this overview are neatly arranged in that sway presentation. I hope you're checking it out. 
And I hope those the things that I place there will be very useful for you. Pero let me just read to you the grass statement as proof that we can align Minecraft activities with learning outcomes. Okay. So alam ko lahat kayo familiar sa grass, right? So pinagdaan na natin lahat yan. Anong ibig sabihin ng grass? Lagay nyo nga sa chat kung ano ibig sabihin ng G-R-A-S-P-S. Or kami na lang ba yung gumagamit nito ang acronym nito? Anong ibig sabihin ng grass? G-R-A-S-P-S. So isa siyang paraan ng pag gawa ng project or ng performance task. We have to think of the goal of the project, yan G, the role of the students. Okay, or the audience, kanino nila ipapresent, sino may kinabang ng project. Okay, the situation or the context at hand. Um, ano yung problem na isosolve? So may critical thinking talaga and problem solving when we uh, use game-based learning. And of course, standards. Okay, so let's take this example. <clears throat> Uh, looking at ano yung goal, role, audience, situation, problem, and standards. So let me just read it to you. Um, I know that we are very familiar with this. Uh, you are the chosen astronauts by NASA to go to Mars. Ayan, kasi kakaparod ko lang no, the space between us. Na. And then yung first scene nun, may mga, pupunta, may mga papunta ng Mars. So yun, yan yung inspiration ng first line there. Okay, your role together with your fellow astronauts scientists and engineers. Very clear naman yung role, di ba? May differentiation pa. Yung iba sa kanila, astronauts, yung iba scientists, yung iba engineers. Okay, they will create a plan for an outpost or a base, Mars base, that will house the team and will keep them safe. So may konteksto, may problem na sinosolve <clears throat> para mag-expand yung colony, yung Mars colony for the decades to come. While, ito yung kailangan pag-isipan ng mabuti, dapat gagawa sila ng base, pero kailangan pag-isipan nila how to withstand the threats and the hazards that are present in Mars. Ayan, so may problema kailangan isolve, is simulate using my plan. So okay, after finalizing the proposed plan, it represent to NASA's lead scientists, which is being represented by us teachers. And then my standard style, conceptual accuracy, completeness, planning, quality, relevance, and so on. So isa siyang kompletong <clears throat> performance task na may design that you can take inspiration from. So I hope this this the story presentation this project can also be useful for all the teachers out there. I'm a science teacher kaya science yung example. <laughs> Pero I'll try to mention some other um, examples ng science. Okay, allow me to show you um, the sample project that I have chosen. Um, I will highlight some of the students design. Okay, this will show ito right this right now the one that you're seeing shows the top view of the project. Don't judge it from the outside kasi kasama talaga yan sa design nila. <clears throat> okay, gumamit sila ng immediate uh, in resource pool sila. Ginamit nila yung soil ng Mars okay, to cover the base para maging makapal, para maprotect na sa harmful cosmic radiation sa Mars. Okay, so kasama yan sa design. Okay, so the students made the shape of the base to be as rounded as possible. So sa mga science teachers dyan, um, Medyo malaki yung difference ng internal sa external pressure sa loob at labas ng base ng Mars. So, kailangan rounded yung base para mas maganda yung design ng building para mas iwas collapse. Okay. Um, by the way, this is a grade 7 science project. So, imagine your grade 7 students creating something as grand as an entire base with many facilities and kakayanin nila as long as you guide them. And I believe na kakayanan nyo rin makagawa ng ganitong klaseng project or design for your students okay they also have designed airtight entrances and exits okay kasama yun sa design nila um ang, ang problem na sinosolve nila dito para <clears throat> of course to still keep the pressure inside the base at para hindi makapasok yung mga toxic and very fine mars dust uh, inside the base which can be harmful to the <clears throat> to the residents okay Gumawa rin sila ng gym. So kung napanood niyo yung movie or kung napanood kayo ng mga Mars-inspired movies, pag nasa Mars ka, mababa yung gravity, maapektuhan in the long run yung bones and heart mo. So they made sure, the students made sure meron silang gym to keep uh, the residents exercising okay, and healthy. So it's, it's a very logical addition to the facility. And okay, for, to address the problem on 
food. Okay, syempre hindi ka pwede magtanim sa labas ng sa Mars soil, di ba? So, hindi mabubuha yung plants and animals sa uh, Mars soil. Gumawa sila ng aquaponics farm. So, para ginugrow nila yung plants sa uh, animals, doon na mismo sa loob ng base. So, this is a very logical solution for sustainable food in Mars. May naalala kong movie yung nagtanim ng patatas. I forgot. Yung the Martian yata yun. So, ginawa niya rin talaga inside uh, inside a, an isolated system. So, so, I would, so I hope you can, again, look at this way, examples, mas maraming details kayong makikita doon, and the documentation are there, are, are there and the overall flow of the project. Okay, I would love to collaborate with you on your own Minecraft-inspired lessons and projects, and sana maging valuable yung inputs dito. I'm excited to reach uh, to more educators who are into game-based learning. Okay, another example. Ito na, ito, hindi naman to science. PLE naman. Alam ko, marami sa inyo, or almost all of us dumaan dito, di ba? Orthographic sa isometric drawing. Sino ang mga TLE teachers dyan? Okay po, shout out sa lahat ng mga tele or TLE teachers. Matandang-tanda ko pa nag-ganito kami. Talagang sobrang strict ng teacher namin sa pag-border pa lang. Okay, so nag-3D sa 2D drawing kami sa papel. Okay, pero imagine level, leveling up this activity, yung isometric drawing. Imagine leveling up this classic activity and converting your isometric drawings into 3D images that you can interact with using Minecraft Education Edition. So this unlocks an extra dimension of learning and interactivity as we teach about measurement and dimensions. And I believe the next speaker okay, will also talk about 3D exporting. So meron, meron siyang, there, are, there, are, there is a process on how to do it. So I don't know if this will be tackled later. Just, uh, it, may 3D exporting sa Minecraft and you can also edit it in 3D paint. Okay, and these, those are some of the things, uh, including PowerPoint. Ginamit din namin yung, makita niyo yung 3D image sa PowerPoint kung updated yung PowerPoint of 2019 or of Office 365. And they have used PowerPoint to document the students. And this screen recording I'm showing you, naka-PowerPoint po yun. So makikita niyo yung 3D image in a PowerPoint. Ayan. Okay. Another example. Okay. Since physics teacher ako, one of the earlier physics project that we worked on using Minecraft is energy transformation through a simulated Rube Goldberg device. Walang niyo yung Rube Goldberg device. Yung sunod-sunod na mga natutumba. So afterwards, they are tasked to explain uh, and demonstrate their knowledge on the math of it. So mag-explain yung students. So, yung students this, um, station is where like the hmm. weight of the item will activate the pressure plate and then it's going to activate um, a piston which will transfer redstone block to activate another piston and so on and so forth. So let's assume each piston exerts two newtons of force to move a redstone block one meter. So how much work would the piston do in this case? So the formula for work is force times distance times cosine theta. Ayan, di ba nose bleed? <laughs> May pa cosine theta yung estudyante na dito sa Rube Goldberg device niya. So nag-assume sila ng mga numbers that they can crunch just to demonstrate their understanding of the physics behind energy transformation and how it's simulated in their Rube Goldberg device inside Minecraft. And just this Feb 2021, okay, um, Lasal Zubel's Young Astronomers Club and De La Sal Araneta University's Green Astronomical Society collaborated to build this project which was launched as a downloadable world for our students to learn about astronomy again. Okay. Students can create uh, worlds that can be on par with templates na galing mismo sa mga engineers na may nagagdaman. Hopping so cold that I don't feel it all. Hopping so cold that I don't feel it all. Ayan, di ba? Amazing. Di ko kayang gawin yan. <laughs> Gumawa sa'yo ng International Space Station sa mga rockets, di ba? It's simply amazing. Okay, isa pang amazing project 
Okay, another amazing project. Shout out naman this time sa mga Filipino at Ariling Panlipunan teachers dyan na nanonood. Itong project na to, uh, this was created by our senior high school students naman last buwan ng wika uh, in a group build battle contest. And the focus is on recreating and appreciating historical sites. Okay, the winner of this contest uh, was a group of students who recreated the, the structure that you're seeing right now. Sino makakahula kung ano yan? See nga? It was so well made, kamuhang kamuha niya yung totoong, ano, totoong structure. So, sinong makakahula sa chat kung ano yan? Tingin nyo, alo, which building is that? Aling simbahan yan? Wala, wala ko na kita humuhula. <laughs> Aling simbahan yan? Okay, sa mga makakahula, uh, malamang tama yung nasa isip nyo. That is, pakiplay po yung video. I think hindi siya nag-automatic play. Okay, that is, balik po tayo sa video slide. Okay, if you have guessed that correctly, I think that is the San Agustin Church in Pauay, Ilocos Norte. Okay, that is a Baroque architecture style of church that is famous for uh, resisting several strong earthquakes throughout history. So honestly speaking, wala akong skill para gawin yung ganyan classic structure. Pero our students are just amazing Okay, to be able to do this. If you give them the opportunity, if you prepare them, they can create something as amazing as this. This is on par with what uh, probably yung mga experts sa pag sa pag-create ng mga Minecraft structures. Galing. It's really amazing. Pag tinignan niyo yung pictures, may Jessica, ay, merong, mga, merong mga news articles about uh, San Agustin Church in Ilocos. Pag tinignan niyo yung mismong videos and photos, kamukhang kamukha nito. Yes, San Agustin Church. Okay. So, ang galing, di ba? And speaking of build battle contest, so uso yung build battle contest eh. So, sa school, in our school, um, our club called the Lasallians for Technology Education or LTE Club, okay, spearheaded the first major esports event in our school where the club managed a mobile legends contest so may mobile legends tournament kami doon and of course meron din kaming minecraft build battle contest may live kami sa so meron kaming um non live battle okay may mga theme ang theme namin yung core values ng school faith service and community what what build uh, will the students create that will best represent faith service and community parang ganun yung build battle theme namin if i remember it correctly so build battles are very famous in minecraft and you can take the upper you can collaborate with me for the rubrics and for the mechanics. Okay? Uh, Nakipag-collaborate ako sa Globe, I remember. Uh, when doing this, so we sponsor kami ng Globe uh, for this project. And we did it during our Vision Mission Week. No fair. We have, uh, we have a large crowd. The students were really were clapping nung naglalaban-laban sa mga medyo sa alala ko. It's really a very uh, awesome experience na yung mga club members ko, they were grade 7 and grade 8 back then, um, nakapag-manage sila ng esports event. Ayun. And finally, for this project highlight, among the biggest initiatives that in my entire school did during a fair, yung SRCC or yung student council lang naman namin, nag-lead ng ganitong project para gawin yung buong school namin the entire Subel grounds in Minecraft Java. Tapos nung fair since pandemic, hindi kami nakapunta sa school. Okay, yan yung school namin. Ganyan talaga yung sura ng school namin. Okay. Um, so during fair, yung mga students sa may Minecraft Java sa Bedrock Edition, we were all able to go inside the same server, okay, and then explore the school na naka-Minecraft version. Okay, you can actually check out uh, more videos and more photos in our DLSZ SRCC uh, Facebook page. Pero doon mga nag-live, nag-stream, nung nag-libot-libot sila doon sa Minecraft server namin na ang um, theme is the school grounds. So that's a very good, parang yung USD, I think USD also did this, uh, campus tour, you can do that. 
So just imagine uh, our students are really creative. So I leave that impression to you. Uh, ano pa yung kayang gawin ng mga students natin if we are to motivate them and give them the opportunities to show their talents. Ayan po. And again, there are things, finally, uh, there are more things that I actually want to share with you. But for the interest of time, allow me to give just some final notes uh, for our dear par parents and teachers. To our dear parents, let's empower our children to enjoy a balanced life of fun, discipline, and learning. So from time to time, check natin kung anong ginagawa nila. Naglalaro lang ba talaga sila just for the sake of playing or are they actually playing because they're learning at the same time? Uh, let's remind them to take a break. Okay, praise, their, praise them on their job well done. Uh, hindi lahat, uh, para for some parents probably, they can sometimes misunderstand games. And this is such a great opportunity. Uh, this platform is a great opportunity for us to understand na may learning sa paglalaro. And they can go hand in hand. Who would have known uh, that right now, diba, there are courses in universities and there are jobs, real jobs, huh, that have been created by the gaming industry. And they are thriving. They are multi-millionaire companies. <laughs> Who would have known esports is a thing today? May mga esports commentators, they are real jobs. So let's support our children, uh, but at the same time, let's moderate them as well. Kasi laging nandun yung moderation and discipline. To our dear teachers who will be exploring and implementing uh, Minecraft soon in their classes, um, what I can say is huwag kayong matakot uh, to learn from your students too. Sometimes talaga mas advanced sila. Don't, don't uh, be insecure about that. Let's continuously seek advice and help from our partner institutions, DepEd, uh, Microsoft, Odentes, and all our co-educators who has the stories to share. Okay, let's renew our motivation to explore technology, uh, to teach minds, sabi nga sa, sa, sa Lasal, teach minds, touch hearts, and transform lives. I'm leaving this code to you to ponder, and thank you very much for your time. God bless you all. Maraming salamat. Ayan, hats off po ako sa inyo. Teacher Sim, ang galing po. Ayan. Thank you po, Teacher Symbol, for that interesting na discussion. So, ayan. Marami pong nag-react dito. Oh, yes, marami yung topic, no? <laughs> As, opo, opo. Dami po namin natutunan. And actually, we already have a couple of questions for you to answer, Teacher Okay, so let us officially open our Q&A session for Teacher Symbol about his discussion. Unahin ko na po yung akin, Teacher Rubelim. Yes po. Okay, so first question na meron tayo dito, Teacher Sim, is what is the difference between gamified learning and game-based learning? So meron po mga confused pa. Okay, that's a very good question. Okay, kasi marami nga nakakonfuse sa uh, difference ng gamification saka game-based learning. So, let's clarify that. Parang narinig ko rin siya diniscussed recently sa isang Microsoft talk. I forgot the name, but it was discussed there as well. Okay, so pag sinabi natin gamification, okay, ang context is uh, a non-gaming environment. For example, business, uh, teaching and learning, hindi naman talaga games yung pinag-uusapan doon. Pero papasukan natin ng elements ng gaming. Ano mga elements ng gaming yung, yung pwede natin ipasok? Pwede natin pasukan ng badges, okay, ng rewards. May mga nagle-level up, for example. So, pag pinasukan nyo ng gaming elements, satisfactory elements, mga na, na sobrang interactive na elements, yung isang non-game setting, okay, it, it's called gamification. So, for example, sa teaching and learning, meron tayo mga apps like Kahoot, uh, Quizzes, Ayan, Quizlet. So, pag ginagamit natin siya to incite uh, a competition, may ranking, and then nagre-reward ka pa, nagpapasok ka ng game elements sa isang um, originally, hindi naman talaga siya game environment. 
Ayun, so that's gamification for you. Pero pag sinabi natin game-based learning, very clear yung difference. Meron tayong ginagamit na game talaga. And in the context of Minecraft, ang game na ginagamit natin yung Minecraft. Minecraft is a game. We use Minecraft, okay, to uh, uh, align it with learning outcomes, create lessons, and learning opportunities for students. Another example, probably, uh, meron pa yung game. For example, the game of chess. Chess is a game. Okay, pero you can use the mechanics of chess uh, to teach about probably horizontal, diagonal, uh, vertical motion. Ayan. So, pwede mong, pwede mong gamitin yung mechanics ng chess to talk about probably dimensions. Uh, pwede kang, you can, you can use the mechanics of chess as a game to talk about um, damat. So, pwede mag-integrate ng mat sa chess, di ba? May, kasi yung, yung mga version, pwede mo lagyan ng mga operations. And so on. So, kapag may game ka talagang ginagamit, and then ginamit mo siya into uh, aligned with learning objective standards, may design, okay, natuto yung mga sudyante game-based learning. Again, kapag gamification, hindi talaga siya game environment, pero gumamit ka lang ng elements ng games. Okay, to... Uh, engage your learners. I, po, I hope that's clear. <laughs> yeah. well, it's understandable na ako confused talaga yung dalawa. Gamification versus game-based learning. My, yes. The use of Minecraft is game-based learning. Okay, so thank you, Teacher Sim, for, clarif uh, for clarifying that part. Teacher Rubilin, do you have any questions for Teacher Sim? Ayan, yeah, so, so pinakita kasi kanina ni Sir Sim, no, grabe, excellent po yung mga activities na binigay niya sa mga students niya, uh, inclusive po siya. Kahit nga yung, di ba, yung may subject pa para sa Arapan na Filipino, pwede din po siya. And but ang tanong ko po, Sir Sim, um, how do you encourage po yung mga teachers po ng Filipino, yeah, yun nga, yung Filipino teachers, um, language teachers, na magamit naman po yung Minecraft for education edition. Kasi nakikita ko siya, marami na pong lesson plan for science, ayan, pero parang, yeah, science, mathematics po, pero wala pa ako nakikita more activities po sa Filipino. Parang sa inyo pa po. Baka may ma... Uh, actually, this is not a question po. Parang ano lang po, paano po ninyo ma-encourage pa po yung mga educators natin na gamitin yung Minecraft education edition, lalo na po sa mga teachers po ng uh, who are language teachers po o kung ano mang uh, ibang learning areas. Okay, so a probable strategy in schools would be siguro deploy muna kayo ng Minecraft champion. So teachers who are really passionate and really enjoy doing this, okay, in the, in the context in La Salazabel, isa ka sa mga probably pioneer na gumamit ng Minecraft in teaching and learning. And then, uh, fortunately, I was uh, promoted as ed Education Technology Coordinator of our school. And I uh, gained opportunities to assist teachers more on this. So, meron kami mga programs, continuous siya, uh, professional development programs, bite-sized trainings, we have this in school. Continuous lang siya. Teachers who are interested can come in and learn with us through uh, PLC sessions or LAC sessions. That's one strategy, strategy that you can do. And of course, the success as the success stories pile up, okay, more teachers and more students will be uh, interested to try it out. So in po, keep the communication going, keep the training ongoing, and eventually, uh, you will be there. Mararating niyo po yung status kung saan. Magiging culture siya. So nagulat actually ako eh. Naging culture na siya sa Zubel. Our students know oh, may Minecraft tayo. We're expecting of uh, teachers. We're expecting a Minecraft project. So paano natin gagamitin yung Minecraft? So hindi lang siya sa clubs uh, nag exist But that's a good start. By the way, in my experience, uh, we started clubs lang. And eventually, nag-branch out siya as lessons and activities and projects. Uh, into the classrooms and other activities. Even our library librarians, uh, you know what, nagpapakonti sila na gagawin yung library. 
uh, Minecraft edition and then they use that uh, platform to introduce their office and whatnot. So naging culture siya hindi lang ng sudyante, hindi lang ng teacher, pati ng staff. And that's a good direction to actually uh, take and get inspiration from. So I hope that can help. Um, again, uh, wag matakot magsimula. Um, deploy probably Minecraft champions. Mag- we can start as clubs first. Uh, continuous learning training and it will eventually become a culture. Yeah, hey! Okay. Ayan po, uh, Miss Zari, pakibasa po yung ano, uh, yes. comment ng ating isang participant. Ayan, para so teacher, meron po tayong question from teacher Anna Wellin Bakar. So, her question is, Sir, could you share uh, to us how to do assess, uh, how do you assess your students or ano po ang rubrics na ginagamit nyo kasi what if kung di magaling sa paggawa ng Minecraft pero tama ang concept Okay, that's a very valid and good question. Uh, number one po uh, if you check my Sway presentation, nakibot ako na yung link it's, I think it's bit.ly slash Minecraft Mars if you check my Sway presentation, meron akong rubric dun, a sample rubric that I made mm-hmm. Uh, you can check it out and probably take inspiration from that for your very own uh, rubrics. Meron din kaming rubrics for build battle contest that you can get inspiration from. And then, uh, paano kung hindi magaling sa paggawa ng Minecraft and tama yung concepts? Um, that's, I think that's, uh, that's, you can start with formative uh, assessments first, formative learning. Wag natin kakalimutang i-trace na tama yung concepts but then again build um, scaffolding activities that will prepare them to hone their skills. So while we want our students na uh, matuto uh, or magkaroon ng um, skills sa paggamit ng Minecraft of course ang pinakaimportante pa rin uh, first and foremost would be na narating or na achieve natin yung learning standards. Natuto ba talaga sila nung ginamit yung mga Hindi lang gumaling sa pag sa search ng mga blocks. Okay, mas importante na na-achieve nila yung learning outcomes nung nag-assessment na tayo. So probably Minecraft can just be a tool for formative learning. And then when we do summative assessments, that's uh, one good way to check if they really achieve the learning outcomes. And that's also somehow highlighted in the Sway presentation that I made. I hope you can check it out and get inspiration from that. Ayan, I think it's being shared in the comments. Yes, yung link po natin na nabanggit ni Teacher Sim nasa chat box or nasa comment box na po natin so you can check it out. Just click the link then makikita nyo na po yung mga sample ni Teacher Sim po. Yes, if I may add another strategy that I did was uh may may idea ng collaboration meron na akong um, skills assessment that's also in the sway presentation wherein nalaman ko kung sino yung mga sobrang skilled sa Minecraft yung hindi mga masyadong skilled yung average lang and then i created a strategic group kung saan magtutulungan sila yung mga very skilled sa Minecraft they are, they will be able to help those who are not so skilled in playing Minecraft and then of course you really have to be strategic about the grouping um Yung ibang magaling naman sa learning, uh, on achieving learning outcomes, pwede mo rin sila kasama dun sa group. So that's also reflected in this way presentation. I hope you can check it out. Okay, so thank you again, Ayan. Teacher Sim. Yes, thank you very much, Teacher Sim. Uh, by the way, ha, um, we are not turning your learners into gamers, right? Alam naman natin, kahit mga bunting bata, nag-game na yan, di ba? But we are turning your gamers into learners, di ba? Relevant learning po yung mak- uh, may bibigay sa ating kabataan using Minecraft. Hindi po siya basta Minecraft, but education edition po. Yan. Speaking to that po, teacher si may I ask lang po, what is the difference ka po, uh, po pala ng Minecraft education sa regular Minecraft? Okay, yung education edition, um, you have more teacher controls. Mm-hmm. Okay, compared to the regular Minecraft, uh, yung PC version, yung Java version, sa Bedrock version, the other version, sa, ang Education Edition was specially made uh, for the teachers to take charge of uh, the learning opportunities for students. So, meron kang iba't ibang klaseng teacher controls. 
meron kang mga border blocks, yan, meron kang mga allow blocks, meron mga special items that will enable the teacher to have a more managed um, learning environment when using Minecraft. Aside from all the packages of learning that's already integrated inside Minecraft. Ayun po. So, hindi nyo po makikita yun sa ibang edition. So, walang mga lesson plans sa ibang Minecraft version. You can only find them in Minecraft Education Edition. Plus, uh, it's a very safe environment. Um, you can actually uh, limit who goes in and out of your server. So, intranet po siya. Hindi po basta-basta makakapasok yung outsiders uh, and makakapag-communicate dun sa students. No? So, it's a safe space. Um, only those that are allowed by the network administrator can collaborate using uh, the Minecraft when a student or a teacher is hosting. So it it guarantees a safe play and learning environment for the students. Hindi katulad nung ibang version na pwede kang makalaro ng ibang tao from a different uh, country, for example, and then pwedeng... Pwed an uh, untoward incident will probably happen there pag nag-communicate sila. Hindi ka tulad kapag Minecraft Education Vision, controlled and safe your space for the students. That's really recommended. Okay, so thank you po, Teacher Sim. Ayan, Ayan. very well explained, no, ni Sir Sim, yung difference ng Ordinary Minecraft at ng Minecraft Education Edition. Ayan, once again, thank you so much po, Sir Sim. Thank you po. Ayan, so up next, Teacher Zari. Alright, so now, uh, susundan na po natin yan ang second batch natin na ating Mentimeter. And again, while waiting for us to set up our Mentimeter, I would like to share the comment from Teacher Maria Vicenta Galvez. She said, this is con uh, convergence theory wherein we change how we will teach students the way they would like to learn. Ang ganda nun. Okay. Ayan. So, so, meron na tayong bagong ano, Mentimeter na slide, Teacher Sari. Ayan, how effective is Minecraft for education? So, tingnan natin ang pulso po ng ating mga participants, no? Yes. So, yeah, so punta po kayo again sa www.menti.com and use the code 4129-5256. Ayan. All right. So we have three options po dito for you to answer our question. So first we have the, with the right implementation, it will be 100% effective. And the second option is, it has potential, would like to know more about it. Or the third option, san po kayo dito? Uh, I don't know, still not sure. Kayo po, mga viewers natin, ano po ang inyong kasagutan? We would like to know your answers again. Ayan, Yay, so may sagot na. na. Alam mo, Teacher Zari, uh, napapansin ko lang, pag Minecraft ang pinag-uusapan, uh, minsan yung mga parents, interested sila para sa kanilang mm -hmm. anak. Right? Totoo, okay. Pero yung iba, kasi may mga kasama na ako eh, pag nasa webinar kami, pag narinig na kanilang mga anak, ang salitang Minecraft, ayun, parang gusto ng... Uh, palitan yung upuan ng kanilang mga <laughs> mom and dad. Excited makikita, kasi pagnarinig ng Minecraft, no? Makikita nyo po talaga yung epekto ng no Minecraft sa mga bata, no? Napaka-interesting po para sa kanila nito. Kayo, di ba, teacher, uh, Rubelin, if I'm not mistaken, ginagamit nyo na rin po ang Minecraft sa mga yes, classes nyo. Yes, po. Nyo. Yes. So, yung mga bata talaga, uh, uh, sometimes, no, my expectation ka kasi as a teacher pero they able to go beyond grabe creative talaga yung mga bata minsan nga uh, may rubrics tayo di ba pero ano talaga uh, they go extra mile for their outputs ayan so yung iba naman pag baguhan pa lang uh, syempre kailangan pa ng more guidance po pero Pag nag-guided na yan, pag na-well-guided na, maa-amaze ka talaga sa mga output ko nila, Teacher Zari. Okay. Ayan na. So, may ano na tayo dito. So far, no? Uh, with the right implementation, it will be 100% effective. Ayan. Yung may mataas po na bar dyan. Most of our viewers says na talagang kailangan lang natin ng training more training pa then if ever if we are already mastered it as an educator it will be effective kapag binabana natin or inexpress na natin ito sa ating mga students 
Ayan, may tanong po sa ating ano, participant. May bayad po ba ang Minecraft for Education? Alright. Di ba? Very, very relevant question siya. Uh, good thing po sa mga students natin ngayon po sa Department of Education. Kasi po, uh, ang iba nakatanggap na po ng uh, Microsoft, uh, yeah, um, Microsoft 365 account or Office 365 account po. And with that po, may nakalaki po na Minecraft Education Edition. Kaya nga nagagamit na po ng mga grade 6 learners po kasi may account na po sila. Pero yung iba na hindi pa nakatanggap ng account, uh, parang yun, yung pag-access ng Minecraft for Education, hmm, maybe may bayan. <laughs> Siguro po, ito sa mga hindi pa nakakaalam, saan po kaya sila pwedeng magtanong kung ito po ay per division or ano po? Para yes po. po uh, yung sa mga nasa public school po, pwede niyo pong tanungin po yung ano natin, information technology officer po ng bawat division. Ayan, meron naman po tayo dyan. O yung, baka may pakilala din po kayong mga teachers, matutulungan po tayo. Ayan. Ayan. So, we already have our answers here. Yes. So, so far, no, marami pong sumagot na with the right implementation, it will be 100% effective. So, sometimes po kasi, Teacher Zari, no, a teacher okay. cannot implement well pag hindi siya pagkulang yung kaalaman. So, we cannot teach what we don't know and what we cannot share what we don't have. Yes. So, tayo po as teachers, we need to equip ourselves. Willing to train naman tayo, di ba? Totoo. Mm. Yan po yung lagi natin kasabihan as an educator, you cannot teach what you don't have. So, for teachers, talagang patuloy ng patuloy-patuloy tayo nag-aaral din to equip ourselves para updated din tayo sa mga nabibigay natin sa ating mga estudyante. So, I guess that's it for our Mentimeter. Teacher Rubili? Yay! Yes! At hindi pa po tayo tapos. Meron pa po tayong isang speaker, Teacher Zari. Ayan, yes. I'm sure po akong kilala niyo po siya, no? So, share mo naman sa ating madlang viewers. Sure po, Teacher. It is my privilege and honor to represent or to give the speakers to everyone. Ayan, so ang bilis nga talaga ng oras talaga if we do talk about a lot, a lot of interesting things. Agree kayo? Siyempre, yes. agree kayo yan. So, we are now down sa ating huli at pangatlong speaker ngayong umaga. Alright, so, eto na at ibibigay ko na sa inyo ang one of the best master trainers ng Odentes Technologies and our favorite host. So, sa mga sumubaybay sa ating Tech Talk STEM hero, she is not a stranger anymore. She is a graduate from De La Salle University, a Microsoft Certified Educator, a Microsoft Office Specialist Associate, and a Microsoft Innovative Educator. Our beloved Tech Talk buddies, let us give a virtual round of applause and let us welcome Miss Mardi Quaresma. Miss <laughs> Mardi. Good morning, Miss Mardi. Ayan, nakamute po kayo, Teacher Mardi. Ayan, ayan. Good morning po ulit, Teacher Rubilin. Good morning, Teacher Zari. At good morning po lahat na nanonood po sa atin ngayon, umaga sa ating Tech Talk. So, sana po ay masaya po kayo. Marami kayong natututunan sa araw na to. At hindi pa po tayo tapos. Meron pa po ako mga isi-share, mga huling 20 minutes po ng ating webinar. So yun po ay ang ating Microsoft DigiTools. So Teacher Rubilin and Teacher Zari, I have two digital tools po na isi-share sa ngay araw na ito. Wow, excited for that po. Sige po, okay. di na natin papatagalin. Sige Miss Mardi, take the stage. <laughs> okay, so let me share my screen po. Ang aking isi-share po today ay ang Microsoft Paint 3D at yung kaninang shiner kanina ni Sir Symbol, Microsoft Sway. So, medyo i-dissect natin siya. Ipapakita ko po sa inyo kung paano kayo makakagawa ng sarili nyo pong um, Microsoft Sway presentation. So, ayan. Antayin lang po. Ayan. So, ito na po ang ating Paint 3D. So, ito po Paint 3D. Madali nyo lang po siya ma-access pag mayroon kayong Windows 10. Free po siya sa Windows 10. All you have to do is to search and type Paint 3D. At lalabas na po siya sa ating options, sa ating device. So, naka-load na po yan automatically sa ating devices. So, once nyo, kinlik nyo na po yung Paint 3D, ito po ang lalabas. 
makikita nyo po yung interface ng Paint 3D ko. So, kung familiar po kayo dati, yung mga batang 90s dyan, katulad ko po, na ang ginagamit ko lang noon ay Microsoft Paint, yung pa-drawing-drawing lang, pa-click-click lang tayo dyan ng mga paint, tapos fill color, fill color lang. So, ito po yun. Pero mas pinaganda, mas refresh at mas ginawa siyang 21st century dahil hindi na lang po 2D shapes ang ating gagamitin dito. Pwede na rin po tayo makagawa ng sarili nating 3D shapes. So, papakita ko lang po sa inyo ang ating interface. So, ito po yung dati, katulad ng dati sa Microsoft Paint, meron po yung mga brushes. So, pag kinlik po natin yan, lalabas yung paint dito at may mga different markers tayong mapipili. Pwede yung calligraphy pen, pwede rin yung oil brush, pwede rin tong watercolor. Ito, ito, yung dating madaling ginagamit ng mga batang 90s dyan, yung fill color na pag may shape ka nang nagawa dyan, pili ka lang ng kulay sa color palette, mag-automatic papalit na siya. Tapos, pwede rin po yung, yung palitan yung thickness at yung opacity ng inyong brush. So, for example, ilalagay ko lang po ang letter M. Ayan, ganyan. Ganito lang po yung ginagawa ko noon dati sa Microsoft Paint. Padoodle-doodle lang, per scribble, scribble lang. So, sino po ba dyan yung mga nakaka-relate sa akin dyan na Microsoft Paint, lumaki sa Microsoft Paint, at mga circle-circle lang ang ginagawa noon, tapos pa-fill color, fill color. So, type nyo lang po sa ating chat box. Ngayon, after po ng brushes, meron din po tayo tinatawag na 2D shapes. So, sa 2D shapes naman po, yung mga perfect shapes para hindi na tayo mahirapan pag gusto natin gumawa ng oval. O kaya pag gusto natin gumawa ng square, ng triangle, ayan, hindi na po tayo mahihirapan. So, ito po yung mga common na ginagamit natin dati na features doon sa Microsoft Paint. So, katulad po nung sa brush, pwede rin po natin palitan yung fill color. Pwede rin po natin palitan yung kung may line ba or wala. Pwede rin po natin palitan yung color. Ayan, kunyari, ayan. So, kung ganyan, medyo red. Pwede rin palitan yung thickness. Pwede rin po yung, again, yung transparency, yung opacity po ng pictures. At pwede rin po natin siyang may option na palitan yung kanyang appearance. Ayan. Pwede rin natin siya gawing 3D kung gusto natin. Aside po dyan, meron din po tayong tinatawag dito na 3D shapes. Ito na po yung makabago na, na very interesting kasi pwede po natin siyang gamitin sa mga klase natin, lalo na po sa mga students natin, para po sa basic na paggawa ng 3D shapes or 3D, simple 3D animations. Kasi dito po, pag ginamit nyo ito, dahil nasa devices nyo po siya, hindi nyo po siya kailangan ng internet. So, magagamit nyo po siya kahit walang internet. So, kunyari, pag may mga asynchronous po kayo ng mga lessons or activities, kunyari, gagawa kayo ng, papagawa kayo ng 3D animals. So, pwede po nila itong magamit at i-explore. So, talagang matatap ang creativity, critical thinking, problem solving. Kasi, syempre, paano mo i-combine yung mga iba't ibang shapes para makagawa ka ng picture. For example, ng, uh, ng, 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 ng picture ng aso, ganyan, or picture ng kunyari, pwede rin ng mga landscape sceneries. At pwede rin nila kasing gawin yung 3D object. So, for example, ito dito sa ating 3D shapes na options, meron tayo ditong 3D library. Pwede yun automatic, pipili na lang tayo ng mga shapes. So, pwede rin po siya sa ating young learners dahil may mga 3D shapes po tayo dito sa ating library na pwede nila nalang gamitin at parang i-collage ba nila. Gagawa sila ng, kunyari, sasabihin nyo, gumawa ng mga scenery na, kunyari, mga landscapes, different landscapes, different landforms, or different wat, mga different water forms. Kunyari, kung ganun yung lesson nyo, pwede na lang sila dito for younger learners. Pipili lang sila ng mga pictures sa, a 3D object sa ating library. So, available po yan at pwedeng magamit from Microsoft 3D library. Alternatively, kung medyo adult learners po tayo, pwede po natin silang i-challenge na gumawa ng sarili nilang mga 3D objects. So, gamit po itong mga tools na to, pwede silang mag-option na mag-3D doodle. So, sila mismo yung mag-drawing. So, pwede rin po nilang palitan yung brush 
So, iba-iba, meron po dyang capsule, meron siyang cylinder, ay, meron siyang triangle. So, dito lang po muna ako sa capsule. Pwede ko rin po palitan yung thickness kung gusto ko mas manipis or mas makapal. So, para lang po ng sample, magda-drawing po ako ng, kunyari, squiggly lights. Yan. Okay na po ako dyan. So, as you could see, may mga different options po ako na pwedeng galawin. So, ito po is para i-rotate yung aking x-axis. Kung anong angle ko gusto yung animation, pwede makita. Pwede rin siya sa y-axis. Pwede rin siya sa z-axis. Ayan. So, gusto ko siya sa mga ganyang angle. At ito rin po ay ang makikita nyo yung z-axis position. Ayan. Lalo ito, useful po ito, lalo na pag may mga overlapping tayo na mga 3D items or 3D objects na isasama sa ating uh, canvas. Ayan. So, kas dahil wala pa po tayong ibang object, so hindi pa natin masyadong makita yung z-axis. So, para dyan, gagawa ako ng isa pa. This time naman, kukuha ako ng 3D object na, na hemisphere. So, kunyari hemisphere yung gusto ko. Ayan. So, i-combine ko siya, i-move ko siya dito, no? Ayan, i-move ko siya dito para... Ayan. So, as, pwede, ayan, dyan ko na siya makikita na gusto ko medyo nag-overlap, nasa gitna, nasa loob, yung aking squiggly line ng hemisphere. Tapos, again, pwede kong i-rotate yung angles. Depende sa anong view yung gusto kong makita sa aking 3D animation. Ayan. Pwede rin po tayo dito, mga readily available na agad. Merong man, merong woman, eto meron ng dog, merong cat, at meron ding fish. So, for example, sige, uh, ito na lang fish, picture ng fish. So, ikakabit ko rin siya dito. Ayan. So, random lang po ito. Wala po talaga akong gustong gawin. Pinapakita ko lang po sa inyo. <laughs> Ay, tapos, pwede rin yung pumalitan yung colors nung ating mga 3D items, 3D objects, katulad po nung sa ating 2D shapes. Pwede rin po natin siyang i-group para pag kunyari yung nag-move tayo sa canvas, hindi po tayo mahirapan na isa-isa yung pag-move ng mga 3D objects, lalo na kapag happy na tayo sa positions nila. Tapos, pwede rin po tayo magdagdag stitch stickers. Ito, para sa mga texture. So, kunyari, gusto natin yung mga layers of the earth. So, pwede, pwede nilang palitan yung mga textures din ng kanilang 3D objects. At pwede rin po silang magdagdag ng stickers dun sa kanilang 3D animation. Definitely, pwede rin po magdagdag ng text. Ang text natin, hindi lang po siya limited sa 2D. Pwede rin po ang 3D text. So, yan. Hello. So, ayan, imamove ko yung aking 3D text para makita nyo ang itsura niya. Ayan. Ayan. Ganun po ulit yung pwede nyo i-move dahil isa po siyang 3D object. May mga effects din po para i-change yung mood. For example, gusto nating i-change yung mood ng ating 3D. Pwede rin po. Ayan. So, kunyari, pwede nating Gusto natin medyo darker shade or lighter shade. So, it will help po depende sa kung ano yung pinoportray natin. Lalo na, kunyari, pag yung mga landscape nga po, if gusto natin medyo light, daytime effect, yan, pwede yan. Gusto natin nighttime effect, pwede rin po yan. Or, kunyari, yung mood or feeling na ikinoconvey po ng ating art na 3D, pwede rin po natin galawin gamit yung effects na option. And then again, this is the canvas. Yung normal po na as an artist, we have a canvas. So we have the option if we want to show the canvas, lalo na kapag pag 3D yung ginagawa natin, so mas madali sa atin na makita yung mga different angles and different na positioning po pag gumagawa tayo ng 3D. Ayan. So pwede rin po siya maging transparent canvas. O pwede rin po natin i-resize yung canvas and so on. Yan. Again, ito yung ating 3D library. Now, the good thing about this po, kung meron tayong mga augmented reality na mga devices din, pwede natin siyang ipasok sa mixed reality. So, gagamitin po natin yan para ma-view natin yung ating 3D objects. So, ayun. Ayan. So, ayan. Ating 3D 
animation. Ganyan po. So, naka mixed reality of natin. Ganyan, pwede po yan. To help us visualize clearly yung itsura po talaga na ating 3D. Now, dito rin po ang interesting dito as teachers para gusto nating malaman kung paano yung process involved no kanilang paggawa ng 3D animation. Dito sa history, you could ask them to start recording. So, from the start of the process hanggang sa end, makakapture po dito sa ating history. Also, if we want to go back, so ngayon yung mga students natin ay medyo nahirapan or as teachers para mali yung ginawa natin, we could just move back or move forward para kung ano po yung gusto natin ipakita. Na, kung ngayon may mali, gusto natin palitan. So, pwede po tayo mag-rewind, kumbaga, para hindi na tayo umuulit from the start or delete-delete. Ang gagawin lang po natin is to move this history bar na ito. Ayan. And last, Di, pwede po natin, yung ginawa natin na 3D animation, pwede po natin siyang isave. Isave as a 3D model at pwede natin siyang i-insert sa ating mga PowerPoint presentation. So kung feeling nyo, wala akong makitang magandang 3D model sa PowerPoint presentation library natin. So pwede natin ta tayong gumawa ng sarili nating 3D model. So ito, hindi na tayo mamamroblema ng copyright issues dahil sa inyong inyo ito, original idea at makukuha nyo pa po talaga mismo kung ano yung gusto nyong ipakita or i-share sa inyong mga students. So... Ayan. At ang last po ay video. Sa video, ayan, pwede po tayong mamili kung anong file type. PNG lang ba siya? JPEG lang ba siya? GIF? MP4? At pwede rin po tayong i-gawin yung animation. Yan. Kaya sinabi ko po sa inyo, pwedeng pwede siya for a simple 3D animation no? para sa ating mga students. So parang feeling natin with this simple tool, eh, nakakagawa na tayo ng mga 3D natin, na sarili nating 3D. Ayan, pwede rin jump and turn, hover, emerge, wobble. So, ayan. So, pwede rin natin i-change how many times yung loop niya, gano'n siya kabilis. So, yun po yung kagandahan ng Paint 3D. So, yan po ang Paint 3D in a nutshell. The next one, the second one, kung ito pong Paint 3D natin ay pwede, pwede rin siya for all ages at for pwede siya without internet, ang ating next naman po ay nagre-require siya ng internet. So, ito po yung sway, yung sinasabi kanina ni Sir Symbol na sway na pwede, na magagamit lang po natin siya with the use of the internet and maglalog po tayo either sa ating office.com using our Microsoft account or pumunta po tayo mismo sa www.https uh, colon slash slash sway slash office.com tapos ilog in lang po natin ulit ay ating Microsoft account and ma-open ma na po natin yung sway. So this is a web app platform na makakatulong po sa atin para sa ating mga presentation. So mas parang mas madalian siya dahil um, very, mas madali siya for designing and Para pag kumagawa po tayo ng mga reports, mga presentations, ng mga handouts or newsletters, hindi na po tayo masyado mag-iisip ng mga designs no, para sa ating mga gustong ilagay na topic. So, for example, ito po yung sway ko. Uh, the good thing about this, pag nakagawa na kayo ng sway, may analytics din siya. So, makikita nyo po kung ilan na yung nag-view, ilang minutes siya. At yung ilang percent yung nakakatapos. So, quick lang yan para lang magkaroon tayo ng idea. Uy, ganito na pala yung views. Now, when we create a new sway from a scratch, may dalawa po lang kayong kailangan i-fill. Yung storyline and yung design. So, let's start po sa storyline. So, this is a storyline. We could add a lot of uh, parang elements. So, we could add headings. Texts, images, pwede rin natin i-stack yung mga images or mag-upload tayo ng sarili natin from the device. So, pag text, it's either a heading or text. Pag media, ayan, various elements yung pwede po natin i-upload. And also, pag kunyari may mga group of photos tayo, automatic pipili lang tayo kung anong gustong itsura ng ating mga Photos yung ilalagay. Is it grid, comparison, side by side, ganon, nakastack yung mga pictures or nakaslideshow siya. Now, so, for example, ito yon yung isang aking ginawa na 
title and then ito yung aking heading one teaching credentials so nag-add ako ng text card na you may click photo to enlarge tapos naglagay ito na yung mga images doon sa aking teaching credentials na in na aking in-upload na so ready di uploaded na siya tapos the, another heading teaching philosophy tapos teaching experiences ayan pictures and texts now pwede rin po tayong mag-click dito ng insert na magsa-search lang tayo from the internet at may mga lalabas na po siya diyan kunyari teacher so pag nag-search tayo ng teacher may mga suggested na siya ayan so dito including copyright so meron lang tayo dito onting pa reminder na responsible tayo for the copyright so here sa creative commons only means ano to copyright protected avail na in offer sa atin ni Microsoft. So, it could be images or videos as well. Now, after natin mailagay lahat po ng information na gusto natin, doon na tayo pupunta kay design. So, kay design, kiklik lang natin si styles. So, pwede siya maging vertical. So, pag ang vertical, ang view niyan is pababa. Is scroll down. Pag horizontal, is swipe yan. Swipe, swipe, swipe to the right, swipe to the right, swipe to the left. Or yung yung common na style is yung slides para sa PowerPoint presentation slide. So we have here the option, readily available option. Again, di na tayo may hirapan mag-isip ng design dahil automatic meron na siya dito mga readily available. Or kung ayaw yung magtingin dito one by one, just click remix. So pag nag-remix, ayan, automatic na siya na yung nagahanap ng magandang combination para sa inyo. Hanggang sa happy ka na, good, good ka na sa nakikita mo kung ano yung appearance niya, so pwede na yun yung gagamitin mo. Now, syempre, if you want to see kung ano yung magiging feel yung, ng ating presentation, click play. So pag nag-click play, lalabas po yung inyong how it will appear lalo na pag ishinare natin siya sa ibang tao. So, ako, dahil ang pinili ko is yung horizontal. So, I have to click to, to the right. So, ayan. So, nakikita nyo yung mga text cards na nilagay ko kanina. Yung mga titles. And then, yung sinabi ko na yung may click photo to enlarge. So, may kita nyo po yan. And then, yung mga descriptions. Mga badge ko. Shiner ko rin dyan. Teaching philosophy. Dahil tulad nyo, isa rin akong teacher, so ishinare ko rin po. And then, teaching experiences. Ayan. So, nakaano lang siya. One by one. So, hindi na ako nag-stack. Ayan. So, this is my sway presentation. Now, to go back po, if gusto nyo pa pong mag-edit, may parts kayo na gusto nyo pa pong baguhin, just go to edit again. Tapos, balik lang po tayo either sa storyline or sa design. Now, last part, syempre, pag meron tayong ginawa na presentation na gusto natin, i-share siya, di ba? Maging accessible siya to other people. So, just click here, share. So, may mga options din po tayo na pwedeng mapili. It's either for specific people or groups. In uh, my organization lang, kunyari ako, sa company ko, o dentist, so yung mga naka o dentist na email lang po yung makaka-access. And then, or anyone with a link. Now, pag anyone with the link, may options din po tayo to choose if it's only for viewing or they have the option to edit. So, syempre, pag edit, kung ano po yung ginawa mo, pwede rin po nilang maiba or mabago. So, but if it's only for viewing purposes, gusto nyo lang po i-share yung information, yung newsletter, lalo na sa ating parents, so pwede rin po yan. Here, more option. If you want to require a password para ma-view, added security sa ating sweet presentation, you may click this. And then, if you want the viewers to see the share buttons as well. Now, here, pag kinlik po natin ito, pwede po din siya maging, pwede po, pag share kasi natin, so pwede lumabas, iduduplicate nila yung sway, lalong-lalo na if we want, kunyari, it's a handout or it's a worksheet. So, once na-open na ng students nyo, all they have to do is click the three, but three dots icon, and then duplicate this way, tapos yun na yung kanilang pwedeng i-edit on their own para sa kanilang 
personal worksheets, individual worksheets. And then again, pagtapos na, they will just share this way, link to you again. So again, so here, this is Sway in a nutshell and Paint 3D in a nutshell. So that's it for our Microsoft DigiTools for this session. Teacher Rubelin and Teacher Zari. Ayan, thank you very much, Mr. Marty, no? Ang ano, comprehensive po ng ipinakita nyo. Ayan. So, uh, Teacher Zari. Yes po. Hmm. Ayan. Maraming salamat po again, Miss Mardi, sa napaka, again, interesting, isa to sa napaka-interesting na topics natin ngayong umaga. What a way and also what a way to end our session for today. For sure, may mga bago na naman pong na-discover at kakalikuting application na ating mga kaguruan at even yung mga students natin after ng session na ito. At syempre, we would like to express our appreciation and gratitude as well to our first two speakers for equally imparting their expertise and knowledge sa ating mga manonood today. Ay, ah, tama, manonood today. Dahil dyan, Ms. Rubidin, uh, si Ms. Rubidin po ay nandito to award you your certificates. Yes, so sa mga speaker po namin, no, we are so grateful po. So on behalf po of the Department of Education, Information and Communications Technology Services, DepEd Complex, Maralco Avenue, Pasig City, a certificate of appreciation is presented to Dr. Anne Richie Balgos, Associate Professor of De La Salle University, for sharing her valuable knowledge as guest speaker during Tech Talks for All, Harness Your Creative Juices at Home webinar conducted by the ICTS Educational Technology Unit on April 17, 2021. Given the 17th day of April 2021 in the Central Office, Miracle Avenue, Pasig City, Philippines, signed by the head of ICTS ETU, Mark Anthony C.C. And of course, we have also Director 4 of ICTS, Abram Y.C. Abanil. And of course, we have our Under Secretary for Administration, Elaine Delby Pasqua. Congratulations po, Dr. Anne. Thank you And po. with the same citation po. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much po, Dr. Anne. And another certificate of appreciation is presented to Mr. Simbol Fabillon, Education Technology Coordinator of De La Salle Santiago Zubel School. So for sharing his valuable knowledge as guest speaker. So congratulations po, Mr. Simbol. Thank you po muli for your time. Thank yeah. you, thank you. With the same citation po. Yes, congratulations po, Ms. Marde Quarisma, the Master Trainer of Adventist Technologies. So once again, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po. At para sa huli, may babasahin lang po akong comment from our viewers po, Teacher Rubelin. So sabi ni Teacher Mark Edward, simula, umpisa, until matapos. Maraming salamat po sa mga speakers, pati mga add-ons, sa mga ideas nila, also sa mga applications and inputs at output and sharing expertise. Lahat po ng shared presentation nila. God bless po. Hashtag Tech Talks. Hashtag Tech 2021 from SDO Mabalakan City, Pampanga. Ayan, maraming salamat po sa lahat. Yes, hanggang sa oras na ito po, Teacher Zari, nakaantabay pa rin ang ating mga viewers. Yes, and for the uh, evaluation po, kasi po Teacher Zari, po, importante po marinig naman natin yung mga feedback o kung may mga suggestion pa sila regarding po sa webinar na ginagawa natin para naman uh, we can improve or kung ano mang gusto nilang topic sa susunod pa ng mga episode po. Ayan, sa so nakikita niyo po dyan sa baba, yung https colon uh, double slash tinyurl.com slash techtalks10. Ayan, please pakisagot po ng form na yan. Yeah, and so we we expect you teachers ha huh, to to give us feedback. Yes. Ayan, so bago po natin 
Um, tapusin yung event uh, teacher Zari uh, can we hear po ng parang um, uh, hindi siya final words po from Miss uh, Richie Yes. Ah, okay. Sorry, sorry for that. Medyo naglag ako na konti lang. Um, um, I just reiterate what I said earlier. You get the forefront. We are at the forefront. So um, to uh, is draw strength from each other. Uh, wag yung sa mga at uh, wag din tayong masakan kung tayong nagkakamali at kukupad lahat ng gusto na ito wins especially because of this pandemic but just like what against the place shall be creative only then will you be able to realize that there's so much that we can do despite our life, despite our hesitations so kayang kaya nating lahat ito Magtutulungan lang talaga dapat at siyempre kailangan din natin i-prioritize ang ating mga sarili. Thank you. And of course naman, pakinggan naman natin si Sir Simbol. Hello po, good afternoon ba? Good morning pa rin sa inyong lahat. Wala ba ito mag-good afternoon. And again, maraming salamat po sa inyong pag uh, pag-antabay sa ating program for today. Thank you very much for uh, listening and learning with us. And in line with the theme on creativity, again, I would like to... Naisip ko lang kasi <laughs> I would like to say it again. Walang monopoly ng creativity. So do not be afraid uh, to collaborate and to get inspiration from everyday experiences, kahit dull experience pa yan, kahit boring experience pa yan, sometimes creativity and inspiration will strike you. So get, uh, take those opportunities and translate them into learning opportunities in the class. So maraming salamat. Yeah, hey! And of course, from Teacher Sari. Ano, ah, sorry, Teacher Mardi pala. Oh, yan. Maraming salamat po ulit sa pagsubaybay sa amin ngayong araw. Next week, marami pa po tayong Microsoft Digit Tools na na maipapakilala sa inyo or isi-share sa inyo para po makatulong para sa ating online teaching and learning. At sabi nga ni Sir Sam, dadagdagan ko lang, na ang creativity walang tama o mali. Kaya pag tayong lahat may creativity tayong itinatago, kailangan lang nating mahanap kung ano yung tamang platform para ma-express nating maigi yung ating mga ideas, thoughts, and feelings. Ayun. And of course, Teacher Zari. Ah. Siyempre. <laughs> Ayan. So marami, <laughs> maraming maraming salamat again sa lahat po ng ating mga speakers at sa inyo po ang aming mga manonood. Again, magandang araw po muli at yes, see you next week. Marami pa po kayong aabangan. Just stay tuned po every Saturday morning. Diba, Teacher Rubelin? Yes, at hindi pa po tayo tapos ha, ano pa lang, nope. lunch break lang muna tayo. Bakit? Dahil may aabangan pa po tayong maiinit na talakayan mamayang hapon po. May maya hack po tayo, may maya report, may maya uh, quiz pa po, and of course may maya hotline. Napakainit nito kasi nga maya hot. <laughs> Line. And kung may mga concern po kayo, <laughs> yes, kung may mga concern po kayo regarding Microsoft accounts or any Microsoft 365 po na mga tools na nagka-problema kayo o may mga concern kayo, uh, please po join us this afternoon. Marami pa pong uh, mga speaker po. Magagaling po silang lahat na makakatulong po sa ating lahat. So once again po, maraming salamat sa ating mga speakers today. We are so proud of you po. Ayan. So, uh, yes, time check. That's already 15, uh, 11.59. Wow, grabe. Tamang-tama po yung time slot natin. So, once again, maraming maraming salamat. God bless everyone. Keep safe po. Thank you. God bless.